And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, Girls Varsity Soccer here in Farmersville. My name is Mr. G, and I will be broadcasting for tonight's game. Uh, I am the AV director here in Farmersville ISD and have a wonderful opportunity to fill in when we need some commentators. And so I'm super excited about the opportunity to to call another girls varsity game. Tonight's matchup is the Lady Farmers taking on the uh, former district champion Salina Lady Bobcats. The Lady Bobcats have had uh, quite a season so far. Uh, they are undefeated so far in the season. They're 1-0 and in district. We just started district last week. And so the Lady Farmers are 0-1 and, and the Lady Bobcats are 1-0. But overall, the Lady Farmers have an 8-7 and seven record, and uh, so they've had uh, quite a few victories in the preseason and some great challenges. But the Lady Bobcats are coming in with a 12-0 and 0 record so far this season. So they look like they are definitely um, uh, on their way to another district title and uh, really taking a run at the state title. Last year they got knocked out in the regional finals round and um, and I believe the Anna uh, Coyotes, Lady Coyotes, ended up going on, which are also in our district, and winning the state championship. So uh, it's going to be an interesting uh, matchup tonight. And as I was joking with my crew earlier, it is a beautiful night for soccer in Texas uh, because it is 40 degrees and raining with the potential of sleet and possible snow. So why would we not be playing soccer outside in Texas? Well, our game is underway, and right away, Salina takes control of the ball right from the get-go, and uh, got nice control ball movement, a nice little defensive effort there by number 13, Lauren Hall, who is set up in the center of the field as one of our defenders. Salina trying to get the, the, the ball to the center of the field and make some attacks on it. And the ball goes out of bounds uh, on the goal line, so that's going to be a goal kick for the Lady Farmers. No, correction. Apologize on that. Looks like the referee made a signal and the ball went out of bounds on the sideline. So we got a throw in for the Lady Farmers. And immediately taken back over by the Lady Bobcats. Good defensive effort for the Lady Farmers. A shot on goal by the Lady Bobcats, and it is in. Goes right over the head of our goalie for the Lady Farmers, and that puts... The Salina on the board real quick with a minute and a half into the game, and they are on the board one to nothing. Here we have a uh, start of the play after Salina score. And the Lady Farmers are able to knock it out of bounds. A throw in by the Lady Bobcats. Lady Bobcats trying to control most of the play. And as we mentioned before, uh, Salina certainly on the verge of having an opportunity to make a run for state again. So it'll be uh, pretty difficult for our Lady Farmers to um, to try to, their goal, I guess, is to try to keep the Salina Lady Bobcats in the, the single digits would be a great effort for the Lady Farmers in tonight's matchup. That shot on goal, high and away, so a goal kick for the Lady Farmers. Looks like I've got a guest commentator who's about to come in. I'm super pumped about this. Coach Riffy, one of the boys' coaches, is going to step in and help me call this game, which will be wonderful because Coach Riffy is a soccer coach and knows soccer, whereas I uh, used to coach a long time ago, and uh, that was uh, my daughter's Little League soccer, and I coached it for three years and um, still don't know that much about it. 
<laughs> but I, I know enough about it. Uh, so Salina has still got control of the ball, um, trying to set up their offense and uh, see what they can do to try to get on the board again. Moving the ball there up the center. Unfortunately, we don't have a list of players' names, so if there are any Salina fans that are listening to today's broadcast, I apologize. We don't have a roster for the Lady Bobcats. Lady Bobcats make an attack into the center of the box, trying to make something happen, and the Lady Farmer is able to clear it out a little bit. Picked up by number 10 for Salina, and a shot on goal, and that is good. The Lady Bobcats have scored another one and about to go on the board for a 2-1 to -one score. we got 35 minutes left in the first half of play, so about five minutes in, and the Salina Bobcats... Two to zero. No. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, we have Coach Riffy coming in uh, to help commentate the game for us. And uh, obviously he's going to be uh, have a lot more knowledge about uh, the sport since he does coach the boys' team. And uh, welcome, Coach Riffy. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks for me being here. Let Absolutely. Me Absolutely. So uh, I was mentioning to earlier uh, on the broadcast uh, where we just uh, – surprised they didn't just call a handball right there. Uh, number five for Salina had the ball. Uh, I guess she it ricocheted off to her forearms instead of her hands. But um, I was mentioning the fact that uh, we are early in on the district. Oh, there we go. The Salina Farmer is able to deflect the ball and into the hands of our goalkeeper. Who is that in goal? Do you know, Coach Trivia? Michelle Ortiz. So Michelle Ortiz, one of the seniors. <coughs> Excuse me, for the Lady Farmers, still battling that midwinter cold that came in with that beautiful midwinter blast we had that took us out for a week. So Salina's keeping possession, passing the ball around the 20-yard line, close to the top of the box. It looks like number seven's going to take a shot. Goes wide and out uh, bounds for a goal kick for the Lady Farmers. So one of the things I was mentioning is we are early in the district and sitting at uh, only one game played by each team. Uh, Lady Farmers lost their first match in district play, so 0-1. Uh, Salina won their first match. But the big difference is Salina is 12-0 on the whole season. Yes. Uh, they haven't lost a single game uh, in any of their preseason tournaments or preseason matches. The Lady Farmers have had some success. They're, I think they have seven or eight wins on the season so far. Uh, so that's nice to have that early season uh, some of those victories uh, to get started and come into district. But uh, as far as you think and what you've seen, obviously we have by far one of the toughest districts in the state. I would agree. Uh, I mean, we had, you know, Anna and Salina both were, were state contenders last year, and they're back in the district again for us. <coughs> uh, so, this, sir? Yeah, thank you. Got some water here for me. I appreciate it. Um, but uh, what's it look like for the Lady Farmers? As far as the season goes, uh, I would say their their goal is to beat Bonham, uh, and when they get the chance to play Bonham, you get those two wins from there, and then depending on how Gainesville is, look to either get a tie or win there if they can. Okay, uh, is there is there much of a potential at this point? Like I said, I mean, I'm not trying to knock the Lady Farmers in any way. I mean, we've got some great players, sure. and and they've really uh, had some good development. Oh, no handball there. Looked like he might have had a handball on that one, but uh, no call by the ref and deflected out of bounds off the farmer. So that's going to be a corner kick for Salina. Mr. G, I'll say that it pretty much anything's possible. Yeah, for Cause, sure. Because that's the one thing coaches cannot control. It's all done on the field by the players. For sure. You, don't, you can't. You never know with wind and other things, elements. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so maybe their star player fails or get hurt. Okay. And that allows them to yeah. for other teams to capitalize. Yeah, sure. So. Uh, well, and, you know, I mean, as with any sport, shot on goal by Salina, blocked. I don't know if she did it on purpose, but she definitely got her hands in position out of the way. Uh, so she was able to deflect that. Who was that? Number four? Is that right? Yes. Uh, so that's uh, Janice Juarez. 
Yes. Um, Junior captain? Yeah, so she was she in the right captain? place at the right time to block that shot on goal by Salina. They went with a short corner, and they played it quick, but we were there to defend the near post. Uh, Salina still has possession in our third. They took a shot. Senior Lauren makes a great block. Salina still has possession around the 15. They're dribbling in. That's a good step in by Lauren. And we get it back to the 50. And I'll tell you what, that's, uh, as I was mentioning earlier too, that was that's the first time that uh, the ball, well, since the beginning of the game, that the sure. ball's been on that hard side of the field there. But not much of an offensive attack uh, set up for Lady Farmers. That was more of a, just a reset for Salina. Ooh, she snuck underneath the defense and not, no offsides. Yeah, I looked at that. And Lauren does her best oh. to, uh-oh. Lauren hit hard on the field on that one, and she is holding her knee. Looks like she knocked knees maybe with that with number seven. Yeah, we've definitely got a sore knee. Uh, she's holding her right knee right there on that one. Lauren's a fighter, so normally she gets back up, but this might be a little more serious than what we think or what it showed. Now, on situations like this, this is always one of the things that, that I struggle with as uh, kind of a novice in this in the soccer world. Um, so the clock is still running. It's a constant running clock in the world of soccer. But are, is the ref, has the ref put a stoppage of time and so they'll be extended? No, time there's or? no extended time in the high school games. Okay, like so in a high school, show. unlike World Cup soccer and MLS, there's, there's no extended time. But in MLS and World Cup and in European leagues, in this situation, you would have an extension of time at, at the end of the game, right? Normally here, yes. Yeah, normally here also, if it's a severe injury like, like how it is, they should be, the ref should throw up an X, stop the okay. clock. That way we can assess how bad the injury is. Okay. Um, unfortunately, she was trying to clear the ball and it ended up back, back in the, out, in the, in the ugh, end zone. So okay. it set up a corner for some time. So when, right. when the yeah. ball is cleared, they'll have a uh, well, so far, we've defended, uh, successfully defended two corner kicks by Salina, so hopefully we can continue that process. And the and up. She's up now, yeah, absolutely. That's fantastic. Um, not sure if that's her mom. I see um, our trainer. Do you, you call him Coach? I call him Coach L. Yeah, Coach L, our trainer. Uh, awesome guy, great program, really done a lot for our training program that really kind of got underway last year. And then uh, Coach L was able to come on and, and get things going a lot more for us and really uh, got a strong team going for a lot of kids and, and himself being <coughs> all throughout uh, the different uh, teams and different athletics. So Definitely building the numbers here. Yeah, and, you know, it's crazy being – this is my seventh year here in Farmersville, and – uh, to think that for five of those years, well, that I was here and even previous, we didn't have a trainer. Shot from the corner oh. and headed in by Salina. Yeah, just unfortunate we didn't do a great job of marking on that. No. Just kind of got out of position, and, and I think the girls maybe thought it was uh, that she wasn't going to be tall enough or be able to jump high enough to get that with her head, but... She definitely made contact and put it in the corner of the goal, and that takes Bobcats 2-3. The mindset also, they're still thinking about Lauren. <coughs> you know, so they're still a little distracted because of what, you know. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And the fact that that was, would have been Lauren's position pretty close to that spot in the goal for. Well, if you notice, they moved Ashlyn Clark, sophomore, to the yes. back line where Lauren was playing. Ball kicked out of bounds for a throw in for the Lady Farmers. Is that uh, is that Jennifer Rangel that's running? Yes, that is right there Jenny. on the far side. They call her Jenny from the block. <laughs> of course she is. Absolutely. You know, she, I would hope that she eventually, at one point in her life, has J Lo money. Yeah, that she, would be pretty impressive. It would. Be. <laughs> uh, all the girls love her. She's a hard worker. She's still learning. Uh, she's a freshman. Great attitude, hard worker. Now, uh, speaking of that, um, not a lot of seniors on the squad this year. No, we have uh, two. Yeah. Uh, technically, we have three with Evelyn, 
who's coming back off an injury from ACL, so she's hoping to make it back in time. Yeah, yeah. Any idea on the time frame for Evelyn? Uh, it'll be either the last two or three games. Oh, all right. Well, if they do have an opportunity and get lucky and make their way into the playoffs, then that would be amazing for Evelyn to have an opportunity her senior year to come back and get in the playoffs. Ball cleared out by the Lady Farmers right there and gone out, uh, out on the side, so that'll be a throw in for slide at number 13 for Lady Bobcats. Going to throw this one in. No, correction. Oh, it's a, it's foul. Apparently we got a foul. foul. Okay. I didn't see it. No, I didn't see it either. I, maybe that was off ball somewhere? It could have either been offsides or handball. Uh, Lady Farmer is still trying to figure out exactly where they want him to kick from. Looks like it's going to be inside the goal there. The sideline judge is indicating where they want that to go. And what's great tonight, we have three refs, which makes a big difference. I noticed that. Okay, so I was going to ask you about that. That seems a little bit unusual. Usually you have two refs uh, in situations like that. So, um, and There's a kick out of the 18-yard box. Farmers with possession. Slina took it down the outside on the left wing. Looks like, oh, there's a pass number seven. Nobody's And an open oh. shot. Great job. Great stop by uh, uh, Michelle. Michelle with a nice grab and the goal there. One game earlier this year, she had about 18 saves. No kidding. She just was on point. That's amazing. And, that's and again, that, that's that got to be a huge boost for uh, the rest of the team when you've got somebody who's working solid in the goal You've got that confidence that even if they get past you, get some shots on, you know, you'll be able to stop them and, and, and be able to maybe step forward and make some offensive advances there. So that's uh, on that ball right there. That's Kimberly Rodriguez uh, trying to help out. And that's a shot on goal by Salina. And there's another score for the Lady Bobcats. Puts them up to four on the goal. I think there was some miscommunication on that one. Definitely, definitely. And, again, that could very well be from Lauren Hall being out with the injury. That's normally her position right there in the center, correct? Yes. Yeah, so. She usually in the, she runs the defense or in the holding mid spot where she can help protect or step up in that area to help get the ball out. So we got the ball back for the start of play after the score. That's, uh, is that uh, Eureta? That's Kimberly. Eureta Hernandez that just kicked off there at the beginning. Kick things to get things started. Or that Kimberly Quaylar. Looks like Kim C. Because Kim R is down yeah. here. All right. So Lina's got the ball on the right wing. Lady Farmers took it away for a second. Oh, nice little defensive attack right. there. I mean, see, somebody should step to that that yeah. way. Yeah. Shot on goal by Salina. Kind of a long one from the, about the 20 yard line. But deflected off of uh, Michelle and out of bounds. Sets up a corner kick. And they were successful on the last one with that header. Let's see if we can readjust and set this up. And so as like you say, Mark. Yeah, we're they're set up right now. It looks like a zone defense. Oh, they went short already. They wouldn't played it already. And they missed their opportunity. <coughs> yeah, it looked like they, instead of trying to, to go at the goal, they just popped it out to the front. And tried to do a quick attack and not successful by number 13 from Slina. And you can tell she's a little frustrated with her. I think they went too early. early. I think yeah. that's what it was. The refs were not ready. Oh, to... oh I see what you're saying. Okay, so they even went too, er too early for the refs. So they're just going to reset yeah. everything. I'm not a big fan of zone defending. I'm a man marking guy. Okay. Um, that way you have a, a body on a body. Yeah. And then by zone defending, it allows them to run on and gives them more opportunity and space to – get up in the air or it makes sense like i said I, my, my soccer knowledge is is pretty slim but uh i have pretty i feel pretty decent soccer knowledge nice attack by salina but we got filled up the box really well on that one I know somebody's got a step good there you go sorry i'm still not sure about that <laughs> my series <laughs> trying to get in on the commentation she's like i'm sorry i don't know what's going <laughs> on there we go we got a clear we look to counter and number seven from salina gets in the way Still doing a good job, Lady Farmers, for pressing. Yeah, it looks like number four for Salina trying to reset the offense for them. There's Gets it out to the outside. Yeah. So they're going to attack down that left wing. It seems they like to do, and then cut in. 
The tack on goal by Salina and deflected off of our, our goalie, and that is Michelle, correct? Yes. Yes. And she's the she, only senior uh, left. Yeah. She, oh, okay. Playing tonight. Yeah, sure, sure. And she, she got her hands diving, on that one. Yeah. And uh, so nice block. So, again, one of the things you mentioned, she had a, a game a while back, eight, about 18 saves, like you said. Yes. And so in this game, I mean, there's no question. The girls knew this going in. The Salina is a strong team. They're going to be attacking the goal a lot. Yes. And uh, so if, if Michelle can try to – Honestly, I mean, if she can keep it uh, equal, the number of attacks oh, to, a shot on goal. No. Uh, I mean, shots on goal as compared to goals scored, um, if she can keep that, you know, the blocks in in uh, in her positive favor, then that's going to be a win. Definitely, you know, yes. The, and one thing they could do, too, is she can waste a little time here. Sure. You know, get the clock running off. Sure. So, and that's one of those things uh, for those that are maybe new to soccer that are listening in. Uh, those uh, kind of tactics from a coach yes, that yes. Uh, you're going to go. Uh, when you know you're playing a team that is is certainly stronger overall, Far you know, superior. again, you obviously play the game because you never sure. know. You never know what the outcome is going to be. So you're always – you play the game to play the game. Yeah, that's why you play the game to, to see what the score is going to be. I mean, it, it, there's no telling. We've seen all kinds of Cinderella stories in all, ki- in all cases, you know. Um, but um, – you know going into it that Salina is a stronger team overall. Uh, and you can see that on, on paper, and you can see that in person and, and okay. what have you. We took a goal kick. Now nice. we got the ball out to the 40. Oh, got some offensive work across, across the mid- midfield. That's yeah. pretty great. Here and that, yeah, it's funny that, uh, that you say that because that is one of the struggles I always have because I do call some of the football games, and, and I'm like, across the 50-yard line. That, that's <laughs> There is no 50-yard line in no, soccer. No. <laughs> it is a midfield line, and, and even though we play on a football field, I mean, technically. So, I with the tack, just dribbled by our defender. Michelle with another stop. Another stop by Michelle. Very nice. Yeah. So, as I mentioned before, and we were just talking about, if Michelle can keep her her stops or her blocks uh, in the goal in more than the goals uh, scored, then uh, – because we know Salina is going to take a ton of shots, yes. and that's definitely going to be a positive. Nice defensive move by uh, number 12. That's Kimberly Quailar, right? Kim, Kim C., as you yes. call her. Okay. Another shot on goal. And wide to the outside. And it looks like, yep, nobody touched that one from our side, so that's going to be a goal kick for the Lady Farmers. So a few years ago when I was coaching a girls' team, we played Highland Park, who won state that year. Mm-hmm. And we, our goalie had a lot of shots, and we made a lot of uh, stops. Yeah. You know, we couldn't, you know, they scored a bunch of goals, but it wasn't sure. as bad as it could have been sure. without the play of our goalie. Yeah. And and one thing about Michelle, she's pretty confident. Yeah. And, and again, it's, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, it's, it's four to nothing, 18 minutes left in the first half. That's so far respectable. Yes. I mean, it's very respectable. You got a team here that, you know, potentially is state bound. Or at least you know state finals or semifinals, um, and they've got a lot of players that are going to be going to off to college, uh, playing in college on the Salina side. So your goal is the small victories is what you're looking yes. for. Yes, yes. Anything to build success and um, keep spirits up. Absolutely. So who's got, that that just that did was a, Ashland that kicked a, a goal kick? And uh, uh, goal number kick. ten. Somebody needs to come on number ten. Nice deflection by Ashlyn. Unfortunately, going out uh, out of bounds, so that's going to be a corner kick for uh, Salina. Salina making a sub two, number twelve off for. I can't. But think. nice defensive move by Ashlyn Clark. Yeah, number eighteen is on. One thing Salina has that we don't have is a ton of club players. Yeah, um, and that makes a big difference. Our area sure. doesn't have much of growth right now yet. We're still the Farmersville community is still looking into that. Well, and, and that is that is something really to speak on as well. I mean, Salina is twice the size of Farmersville right yes. now. Yes, population. Um, big time. You know, is, and, and Oop, they went short. Another short goal or corner kick yes, in. Sir. Oh, we got it out. Ashlyn Clark trying to stop it from an opportunity for. Oh, ref stopped it. Nope, said it went out of bounds. They go out of bounds. Or yeah, they, okay, oh, yeah. The corner kick. Yeah. But I was going to say Salina. I mean, I remember just I don't know ten years ago, Salina was the size of Farmersville. Oh, yeah, they were 2A? Yeah, 2 or 3A. Uh, Salina tries to head it back into the goal, but 
deflected off by Ashlyn Clark and goal kick. kicked out of bounds and a goal kick. So what a great opportunity there for uh, Salina to try to get another header in and stop by the Lady Farmers. So small victories. Yes. That is uh, a solid victory. We just, you know, five minutes ago in the game, they had the exact same play, and they headed into the goal and scored, and this time we stopped it. And so that's what you got to be looking at for sure. There's Ashley with the goal kick. Tries to play it wide. Slider intercepts it. And then... Oh, off, off the, the post. Yeah. Well, you like that when the post helps you out too. Post can be your friend or <laughs> yeah, not. Absolutely. Kim's doing a good job. Kim uh, R is doing a good job of keeping pressure on them. And a, a little bit when we have an opportunity, oh, that ball just cleared right through everybody. I don't think anybody touched it. Nope, and nope. goal kick. <laughs> it's going to a goal kick. So there's a little luck too. And again, so, ball's way over there. But – Got a replacement ball, yeah. But like you're saying, this could be an opportunity. Yeah, if you I would, just I would be like, send I, that, go get that ball. There you go. Send that goalie out there and just take some time off the clock, as we talked about a running clock. And as Coach Riffy mentioned, I, I wasn't clear on this one before, but there is no extended time in high school play. So uh, if there is an injury or a timeout called or anything like that, uh, replacement subs or whatever, there is no extension of time. So what you see on the clock is is what you get. Ashley with another goal kick. Out to the 40 yard, but it looks like Salina took possession. So, uh, and obviously, so Ashlyn takes that goal kick instead of Michelle. Ashlyn has a stronger leg. She's one of right. the girls with a strong leg. That's another okay. thing um, <laughs> Farmersville is working on getting uh, better in the weight room and stuff to build sure. the legs. Uh, a lot of it, too, is technique, but yep. a lot of it comes from just, you know, strength. Well, and the other thing that, uh, again, if so, if, oh, and nice, nice deflection save. and a great save by Michelle right there to, man, that was a quick kick by Salina. Just got it off the deflection off Ashley Clark and she not able it. to score. So great job by uh, Farmersville to defend that one. I feel Michelle rushed that kick, the punt. Yep, she could have yep. pushed it up, yep. took some time off more, and then, you know. And there's Morgan. She's a sophomore. Uh, she does a good job of Defending and getting the ball away. Salina back with more possession. Nice job filling the box right there. I think that's your Rayleigh with the orange shoes. Yep. Oh, no, that's Janice. And then and Michelle. Janice another, has another save by Michelle. Well, and, and one of the things that we see right now is Salina is, I mean, they are taking some, some attacks on the goal. But they're kicking them from the 20 yard line, 15 and 20 yard line, you know, football 15 and 20 yard line. Um, and, and to be honest with you, I'm sure that's some of the stuff that Coach May probably talked to her players about. If she can keep Salina out of the box and having to try to attack from outside the box, another save by Michelle on that one right there, uh, scooped up, not a strong attack by Salina. But again, that's what I'm talking about. If Farmersville can... Oh, look. Here's a little game and chip right here. There Not you go. Shoe, yeah. <laughs> That's it. And normally, she has about six seconds. And it looks like there's going to be... A, no, no. I thought there was a substitution there, but Ashlyn just uh, made her way over here. Coach may want to talk to her a little bit more about the defense that's going on in the box right there. Um, but again, if you're forcing Salina to not have good looks on the goal, no. then that's going to keep the score down. Oh, we put it right back to them. That's, that's a little. And that is one thing that you were, you were just talking about right now that I've seen because I was able to call a couple games uh, last year and the year before for the Lady Farmers. And I, I, come out. I felt like, uh, oh, there's a solid attack on the goal by Salina, and that is a score. Nice cross. Uh,
All right, Farmer fans, we are back. We had some technical issues and our internet went down for a little bit. But our feed is back up and we are seven seconds away from the second half starting. As you can see on the scoreboard, we do have a score of Salina 7, Lady Farmers 0. Hey, Mr. G, how's it going? Hey, Coach Riffey is on the commentation uh, right here. Uh, my name is Mr. G, and I'm the AV director here at Farmersville ISD. Coach Riffey is our one of the assistant coaches for the boys' team and uh, one of our history te or English teachers. Sorry, senior, the senior, Sen the senior English teacher. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. I'm a lone ranger, <laughs> and uh, he was willing uh, to come up here and do some commentation for us. Yeah. And stay it's out pretty of, great. Stay out of the cold. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, that is one of the nice things that uh, I tell my students about that are running this, uh, the live stream as well, shooting the cameras and things like that, because um, it's, it's a lot colder than football season. Even though we had a couple of cold nights during football season, this is, soccer is in Texas is, it's crazy that it's in the winter, but it's cold all the time. Especially with the wind. Salina so started off that second half right there and, uh, and just didn't get anything started and almost uh, cleared it out of bounds by themselves. Again, they're purpose. attacking that left wing. But what we were going to say is, uh, for those of you that missed it, uh, we had quite a few saves by Michelle, who's in goal for Lady Farmers, uh, right there at the end. Uh, she did there let one or two go past in the last ten minutes of the of the first half, but she had about seven or eight saves there in the last ten minutes, and it was pretty great. That was a good job by Morgan. She um, she cleared the ball and she played out wide, and we just didn't get a run on it. Just little little slow on the re reaction to it, but a great idea. We're traveling down this left-hand side again. Now they're going to cross it in the box. And a great save by Michelle. You can see the Salina player was super upset on that one because she was right in position yeah. and just swung and missed. She thought she had an easy one. Yeah, she did. I'm telling you, Michelle's kind of like a like a, a glove, a human glove, where she can just snatch things up. Well, and that's, as we were talking about before, that's something that the lady farmers need for sure because that gets them uh, some motivation. Okay, we crossed the 50. Now we got a counter. There we go. And the goalie, keep, see, keep uh, going, as crazy going, as going. it is, the oh, goalie not, for yeah. Salina touched the ball, I think, for the first time of the whole match. Who's number seven? Number Eureta. seven is Eureta. Eureta. Eureta Hernandez, yep. Yeah, I thought that was Kim. See, Eureta did a pretty good job. She needed to be just a smidge more aggressive. But the Salina knocks it out of bounds, so we got a throw in on our side of midfield. There you go. Throws it down the line. And something that you mentioned a slight bit there in the first half is the wind. The wind is pretty substantial tonight, oh. and it's kind of shifted a little bit. Uh, so it's definitely blowing in the favor of the Lady Farmers. So that might be a factor right now for the Lady Farmers and Salina to be able to get some more activity down on our end of the field. Salina had a throw in on the right side. Actually, I guess, I guess it would be our right side? Far left side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> far left from the viewer point. The camera right angles. Right side of the Salina side. <laughs> yeah. Now they're just passing the ball. If you see possession, possession. And yeah, and shot. attack on goal goes far out left, out of bounds. Michelle doesn't even have to put a hand up on that one. Well, it's going to be a goal kick for the Lady Farmers. I'm trying to think how many times you called her name. It's got to be at least 15. Yeah, definitely. Well, and, it, you know, again, we talked about this before. I mean, uh, we're early in districts, and you see the district sure. records. Salina is 1-0. Farmersville is 0-1. But, uh, I mean, Salina hasn't lost a match this year. Nope. And they, last year, um, state semifinals they finished? or They won state. No, they won state last yes. year. And they were, I, I they're wasn't projected sure I to them. go back. Yeah, and, and there's no question. I mean, I know they graduated a couple of really strong players, but they've got – so many they just reload with, and you mentioned earlier in the first half that they've got a great, strong club program up in, in the Salina area. And, of course, they've been building their program up for quite a bit. And, as yeah. we mentioned before, they're uh, a school that's twice as big as Farmersville. And they got numbers. They have a JV yeah. program. So, we, don't, we don't have a JV program for both both units. And they have a youth program in Salina. And they have, yeah. a, you know, they've got kids in junior high that are playing soccer. And I don't know if they have junior high teams necessarily, but they've definitely yes, got. they do have a junior high. They do have junior high teams. So. Oh. So if you've got a program that's that's building up from elementary school level, of course you're going to have better players and stronger players and a in a bigger bench to be able to work from. So 
Um, but the, we knew that. Farmersville knew that going into this. And so the big thing for today's shot on goal by Salina, another save that by Michelle. Shot. That was Great a Great job. Shot. Yeah, it was. And Salina's just keeping three in the back. Looks like they're running a 3-5-2 look. Where they got three defenders, yep. two up top as forwards. And the defenders, obviously, in this situation are doing a lot more setting up of the offense than, yes. than necessarily having to worry about attacks on the goal. But, you know, it, that's why we play the game, as we talked about earlier. Lady Farmers get a little bit of confidence. Right. Nice clear okay. out by okay. Ashlyn. Gets it to our side of the field, and that's Reed the second it. time yeah. in the game, but second time this oh. half that the goalies had to. So we need somebody else to help pressure that. Yeah, there needs to be somebody on this side of the field attacking as well. So they're going to play it wide again, which is good. Force it wide. Salina's going to dribble, try to play it across the field. Number two for Salina. Does a little fancy footwork and takes an attack on goal and is successful from the 20-yard line, outside the 20-yard line, the football 20-yard line. She had a curve on that? Yeah, she had a nice little bend it like Beckham yeah. action going on right there. Um, but, uh, yeah, a solid shot over there. And, and so far in this game, Michelle stopped most of those attacks. Yes, that one was a little uh, up close just, to the upper 90 corner of, that, of the goal where Michelle couldn't really die, yeah. like, you know. And unfortunately, Michelle wasn't blessed with height. Right. So. But I don't well, think a lot of people couldn't have got that. Yeah, exactly. And and that was one of the things I remember. Um, my ex-wife was a volleyball coach in Allen. And uh, she had, I remember in her first few years, they started same thing, like Farmersville, just trying to get their program started. They were a couple years into it. And the soccer coach came to uh, volleyball practice and was just begging the volleyball players to come out for soccer. Yes. And And most of them, not because... She wanted uh, soccer players, you know, like offensive and defense players. She wanted the height in the goal. Yes. <laughs> and they're already used to using their hands. Right, so, exactly, yeah. yeah. And we actually had one of our players, it was, it was, uh, it was rather humorous because um, the head coach of volleyball uh, was, was not really happy about it because she was actually, it became an Olympian oh. volleyball player. Oh, okay. But she went in and played three or four uh, scrimmage games in goal. And uh, and she was like, no, I don't want my like D one volleyball athlete going out there and taking a chance of injuring herself in the looks like. in the goal. So Salina, while we're talking about random stuff that means nothing to Farmersville athletes, no, this is good though. <laughs> uh, Lady There's Farmers nothing. forced Salina to turn it over in the back of the end zone, so we're gonna go with a quick goal kick. And as we mentioned before, Ashland Clark is the one who's taking on the goal qu goal kicks for yeah, Farmersville. That went for everybody. Uh, the sideline judge said that one went out of bounds and indicated uh, the wrong way with the flag. Oh, so, I uh, yeah, probably. I did too. I saw that right hand go up. But I thought it was already out before you really slid into it. Yeah. So, Salina gets that the throw in. How's it? Nice. Yeah. Out. Nice defensive go, play by Kim Quellar. Kim C, as Coach Riffey calls her. Yeah. Got a little engine. Freshman on the program and got a lot of engine, a lot of a lot of spunk, and there you go. That uh, ball Slana goes turned it over. So it's going to be out of bounds in. and a throw in for the Lady Farmers. And let's see if we can get something going on the offensive side. Looks like we got a substitution here. And uh, trying to see who that is. Number ten, maybe. Is that Jennifer Rangel coming back in the game? Yeah, sure is. Coach May talking to, um, looks like, is that um, Italy, Alonzo? Yeah, Italy. yeah, her brother also plays soccer. All right. For the boys' team. <laughs> Not the girls' team. Yeah, good. Yeah, the uh, so Lady Farmers threw that one in, and unfortunately, Salina, uh, maybe must have been a handball there. And Salina gets a free kick from the left side of the field. About a 30 yard, but you saw the wind just kind of pushed oh, man. it back. Yep, it's held it up right there. And that ball goes out of bounds, but deflected off of the Lady Farmers, so that's going to be a throw Salina in. throw in. And as we mentioned, that wind is blowing hard and fast. We've got from nobody on number eight. Left okay, now side. we got somebody on number eight. That's good. From left to right, as the viewers are looking at the field, is the way the wind's blowing. Deflected wow. off of Lady Farmers. Okay. And Looks like we have a chance to counter. Urena trying to get something going right in the center. Keep pressuring. There you go. Come on, come on. There you go. Yep. 
And as, oh, there's a nice little interception by the Lady Farmers. Not able to stay a hold of it, but that was, at least. Uh, sophomore Morgan Cobb. At least keep the action on this end of the field. Or at she least has try some to. Uh, club experience. And an attack by Salina. Stopped by Michelle again. Yeah. All right, now take your time, Michelle. Take your time and let your team get set. We've just uh, about 10 minutes have ticked away in this second half. And oh, we have a chance? A lot more uh, Farmersville activity going on in this end of the field. Lady Farmers trying to make an attack, but just like Coach Riffy mentioned a minute ago, uh, you don't see a lot of the Farmersville players coming with her. So now they're her. countering. Yeah, they're countering now. Salina is. They got four in the box. And a cross shot, and that goes uh, out of the back of the goal. For a goal kick. Uh, goal kick for Lady Farmers. But I don't know if that was a shot or a cross. I yeah, I, I would say it's probably a cross because it looked like they had another player that was coming in on yeah, the left they side. They had three up there. But I, uh, but again, back on it for sure for the Lady Farmers. I mean, you see one girl that crosses midfield and, and goes on an offensive tack. There should that's be not, a few more pull, That's not going to help. Yeah. No. I mean, I understand, and maybe Coach May is setting this up to try to defend because this line is so strong on the offensive yes. attack. But at the same time, it's like, well, yeah, still, but you want right, to go attack the it. goals. So. There's Ashton with another goal kick. And you can even tell from that goal kick, I mean, Ashland in the first half kicking against the wind wasn't yeah. even getting the ball anywhere near midfield. And on those last two goal kicks, she's almost kicked it all the way to midfield. So They're attacking on the left side. That ball's going to go out of bounds. That's another goal kick for Lady yeah. Farmers. And, and we'll this see is a Ashley chance Parker for there. Michelle or somebody to... Uh, for those of you that might be just joining us, and, and we uh, unfortunately had an injury with Lauren Hall, one of the uh, captains or uh, co-captains of the team, and uh, she was uh, knocked out. I she, think maybe they kind of had knee-to-knee -knee contact between her and another Salina player, yes. and she was uh, down for a couple of minutes, and then they carried her off the field. She wasn't even able to walk off on her own, so that's real real concerned about that one. Haven't heard any reports, but she is definitely not back in the game and probably won't see her the rest of the game. Well, we hope we hope it's not too serious. That, well, absolutely, yeah. She's, I mean, a, she's a key for them. Oh, for sure. I mean, for sure. She is uh, one of the strong players, strong on defense in the middle. Um, she's vocal too. She's not afraid yeah. to. Oh yeah, she'll tell herself. you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. She will. She will definitely talk on that field and in the hallways. I hear her talking all the time. So we got another goal kick by Ashlyn Clark here. Uh, she's taking her time. They're talking. To, she's trying to figure out the best where place where she can set it, where they can run onto it or win the ball or win the second ball. And again, those are. Uh, oh, we won the second ball, but just miss kicked it. Well, and that's and that's uh, good for me to understand. Again, as a novice in this sport, that it, you know, obviously you want to win the first ball, but it's not not as important if you can win the second ball. Yes. And if you can win the second ball, okay, fine. It deflects off of a play, you know, the other team's players or whatever. But if you jump on it and then you can make an yeah. attack, uh, okay. Yeah, that's we as struggle good with as, that with yeah. the boys too. Um, so we're still, you know, we keep trying to tell them, you know, either win it or get the second ball instead of sure. just watch and wait. Or kick it in space and let us run on it, you know. Unless you have a lot of tall people or physical mm -hmm, people, mm -hmm. it's harder to win those middle balls. So that's why you want to at least win the second ball. There you go. And Ashton goes with another. There you go. Oh, uh, lost that idea. Out of so, that was a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. Just a little unlucky. Well, and those are the things that I was I was talking about too. Is I is I just uh, I see that we kick the ball right where it seems like Salina is, especially on those goal kicks. And on that attack, oh, oh there we go. Yeah. Salina, yeah, got us, gave us a little help. Oh, Ooh. and off the goal post, the top rail of the post, and Salina is trying there. to make another attack, get but out, no one's there. Out. Oh, we back. tried to clear it out, not able to do it. Ricocheted off the elbow of one of the Farmers Real yeah. players and picked up by Michelle. All right. Solid, solid yes. interchange right there. That was great yeah, defense was exciting, and attack. Especially with the shot from hitting off the crossbar. You bet. And Salina had a few opportunities, but we were able to shut it down. Now we just got to get that kind of excitement on our end of the field. Yes. <laughs> and again, you know, like, you know, they're still growing and playing sure. together. It's still Absolutely. a young team. Very, a lot of freshmen on this team. Yeah. And when we were talking, we had, uh, again, those of you who may not know, our internet went down and that uh, took us off the live stream for a little bit. But we got back up and going at, right there at halftime. But... 
while we were just sitting here waiting for some of the activity and uh, and things to get taken care of on the technical side, we were talking about the fact that uh, there's a big difference between a program that has club ball, a lot of club ball players, a shot on goal by Salina, and that is a score for them. And, I mean, again, that, that's going to happen. You've yeah. got such a strong team, uh, as Salina, Lady Bobcats. I mean, they were state champions last year, are ranked in the top ten in the state this year. Definitely got an opportunity to go back and, and try to defend their state title. And so on Farmersville side, I mean, it's nine to nothing, but we've had a ton of saves by Michelle. Yes. We've had some great defensive stops down on our end of the field. So there's definitely some positives that they can go away with this for sure. Especially so. dealing with two key players out. Oh, for sure. You know, there's more. Well, we get the ball on our end of the field. And again, this is what we were talking about. I know that they're probably running a little bit more of a defensive attack or protection, I should say. Uh, but you want to see more than one player on our side of the field trying to make some offensive moves. And they're just keeping four up high to keep pressure in that. Slide attacking from the their right side of the field yes. there, yeah. Thank you. Our far <laughs> side. <laughs> a uh, header step, across step. the field and a shot on goal and Michelle was out of, not I wouldn't say out of position. She no. wasn't in position for that attack, but but again, she relied on her defenders, and they were there. I think she couldn't see with all the bodies in the way, yeah. but she was able to get the bounce sure. off of it. Well, and one thing that you mentioned is, uh, which I'm gonna, uh, which makes a lot of sense to me right now, and that's definitely one thing I'm gonna talk about more and kind of look for. Is running through the player, the the opposing player, yes. And you see that happen a lot with Salina, and you just don't see it very much with our our lady farmers. Nope. Another shot on goal by Salina, Michelle, right there in the way, uh, lose a little bit of control over it off the bounce, but able to keep it in front of her and scoop it up and stop another attack. And here we go with the punt. And there we got the second ball. There you go. Oh. Ooh. You see how they won the that. second yeah. ball? If yeah, you absolutely. win the second ball, you can control it yeah, a little absolutely. better. absolutely. You can get that, our action going towards the front end. Nice clear out by uh, Orange Shoes. Who would you say has the Orange Shoes? Really, Uraley. Uraley. Yeah. yeah. She's spunky. Not the only player on the Lady Farmers that has Orange Shoes, but we were just talking about she's easy to pick out when yeah. she's in the middle of that bunch. Oh, nice, nice defensive stop. Right there by one okay. of the lady Somebody followers. Needs a step right there. Oh, she takes a cross shot. kick, and I think that ooh, deflected. No, I'm not sure if that was supposed to be a shot or a pass. I think it was probably a shot. It just got hung up there by the wind. Again, the yes. wind is blowing hard from left to right as you're looking at the field. And Ashlyn again with another goal kick. Well, and again, one of the things we talked about from the, the top of the, the broadcast is the key things for the lady farmers are get the front, small victories. Front. Good, pressure that. You ready? He's trying to pressure that to keep the ball off them. Solana keeps possession, but they had to restart, and then they switched the field. Yeah. So things like that can help the team. You know, little little like you said earlier, little wins can help you build confidence. Yep. Absolutely. Then you're going to know going into this match that uh, Salina is stronger. Uh, we got more experience, and they've got older players. We've got a lot of young players on this squad, a lot of freshmen and sophomores. Ball kicked out of bounds by Salina. Another goal kick going to happen here for Ashley Clark. But uh, you just got to find those those small victories for sure. And and that's what Coach May is going to be talking. Hopefully, I'm sure she is going to be talking to her players about getting these small victories and thinking about okay yeah they're 12 and 0 we're we're 7 and 8 um, overall you know you go into this knowing that this the line is probably going to come out yes, with a victory they're, they're a powerhouse so yeah so you look at the small victories that you can get and then you know take that confidence when you go into like you said a game against maybe Bonham or Gainesville or a team that yeah. is a little bit more our caliber and uh, and see if we can go ahead and get a W on the board so I know one of the goals with the girls this year they were they want to get at least a win or two in district. Absolutely, they did not yeah. get a district win last right, year. Right. And if they can primarily like beat Bonham, that will boost their confidence. That way they get sure. And that's what they're looking for. And they've already had, like you said, they've had some success this year. 
that they didn't have last year, and Absolutely. That's, that's helped a lot, too. Ball lost out of bounds by Salina, and, and that's going to be a throw-in for Farmersville. But there it is with that win. That's just keeping that ball blowing all the way down towards – uh, Salinas goal. But. Hey, that's a good thing. Too. Yeah, absolutely. We will take every help that we can get. And I'm not sure, I don't know, maybe you know, I don't know if if we have an opportunity to choose which direction we go. So, Salinas has the coin toss. If they win it, they get to pick if they want to defend this goal or kick off. First. Oh, I so got they you. Get the, they got to get the choice and then um, so if they say they want the ball first, we yeah. can pick the side if we want to defend gotcha. or whatever. And so they so obviously chose the, kickoff, the ball yeah. and yeah. And uh, which is great because then that gave us the win here in the second half. And that's another thing with throw-ons, throw-ins too. You need to we have you got to practice those communication. Yep. So yep. if you want to play it to somebody in space or play it where they can run on the ball. And there's Solana with another attack. And it looks like they're uh, they thought maybe one of their players was in a little bit better position and wasn't there, but. None of our defenders were able to make it to the ball in time. Got through those defenders there right there and Michelle attack again. on the ball. And there's Michelle saying her yeah. name for like the hundredth time. <laughs> hey, get used to her. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, if anybody's listening, with that, what she can play that? goalie Michelle up there Ortiz. at a different level. Michelle Ortiz. She's not afraid to handle different shots of every caliber. Nice stepping in right there, and that was a little bit of an example of running through the player, yes. yeah, getting was, in front of that player and trying to that was advance. Kim it. Rodriguez, was it? Yes. Now is that that is not? Yeah, that's Kim Rodriguez free us uh, because we have a. We I think we have a Kim Rodriguez that's a cheerleader. Is that correct? Or plays basketball? Oh yeah, she plays basketball. Yeah, and she's there. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, and we have different, a, yeah, different Kim Rodriguez. We also have a Kim Quaylar yep. up there, who's a freshman. Yeah. So that's why I, I would call Kim C and just Kim. Sure. That way I could. Well, and again, being here uh, in Farmersville, it's my seventh year here. Um, I have taught, uh, I think, three Quaylars at this point between <laughs> between eighth grade and. And on, and so here's another a freshman Quailar coming up, and, it looks and like continue we have the family kick legacies for the Lady Farmers. I believe, and I, I may be wrong, and miss miss uh, speak on this one, but I believe that one of um, Kim C's brothers was on the very first boys soccer team here in Farmersville. Okay, which started up five years yes, ago, I believe. Five years ago is what I've been told. Yeah. The year of. 2019 when COVID mm -hmm. hit, maybe? Yeah, well, we had one full season, and they were in their second season when COVID hit. Okay. Yeah. So that one year where there wasn't, like, a full UIL team. And then right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, and, and as I mentioned uh, in when we were off the air before that, uh, we actually had a year of, I, I guess you'd call it kind of a club soccer year. I mean, they... They just played pickup games wherever they could get them. Yes. Uh, and Aubrey's doing that. Yeah. That's Sanger. Yeah. And it was, we, and I know for a fact that sometimes we didn't even play other high schools necessarily. We played other club teams or other, you know. Uh, JV team, anything. Or, or um, not the schools. YMCA, but I mean, you know, like okay, other, yes. like organizations, city sure. teams and things like that. But I do believe, if I'm not, again, uh, misspeaking, I believe that uh, we call them senior De La Cruz, but Juan De La Cruz, one of our teachers, volunteered his time to, because he had a bunch of kids that came up to him and said, hey, we want to start a soccer team and we need somebody to sponsor. And so they, uh, so uh, Mr. De La Cruz offered to, to help out and he got things going. And then nice. the next year we, we hired another teacher and, and he uh, came on and kind of was, did all the things as far as a coach would do, you know, I mean, uh, taking the test and, and uh, going to the coaches' meetings and things like that. We still was not an official team, still okay. playing club ball and not in a district or anything like that. Um, and I think there was a little bit of money that they kind of principal's discretionary fund that they found to, to give them some shirts and some shoes and some balls and things yeah. like that. But uh, but kept it going, and now we are, uh, you know, a, a full official soccer team and and trying to get a program going. So that deflected off of uh, Kimberly Quellar as we were talking about Kim C yeah. earlier. Goes so, out of bounds, and unfortunately now Salina's got to throw it. While you were doing your history update on us and yeah. educating us, uh, Salina had a, go a corner kick 
and we made a stop, and then they kicked, they kicked it out, and Ashland had another goal kick. Another goal kick, yep. So and it looks like Salina turned it over. Well, and again, yeah, turned it over. We got a throw in uh, right there about midfield. So see if we can get some sort of offense kind of going for the Lady Farmers. And that's two freshmen and right there working Kim together. Kim C trying to battle right there in the center of the field, and twelve against twelve. Uh, she takes it away from Salina, but a nice clear out by Ashley Clark right there. Yes. And Salina going to have to uh -huh. reset and try to get something going again. Fifteen and a half minutes left in the game. For those of you that may not know, we do have the Varsity Boys coming on right after this. So once this Varsity Girls game is done, we'll have about 15 minutes in between the games and, and we'll start up with Varsity Boys. And that is some uh, offensive move for the Lady Farmers coming down to our end of the field and unfortunately deflected off one of the Lady Farmers that went out of bounds. But a nice... Oh, purple. Yeah, right. nice stop right there. And really excited yeah, there. We, absolutely. We the Coach Riffey making some calls up here yeah. for the ref, but Eurita Hernandez just jumps right in front of that defender for Salina, and that ball goes out of bounds, and you've got Ureli, yeah, Ureli Antonio throws it in, and we've go. got an offensive attack that, uh, let's call it a shot on goal. Yeah. Why not? Let's shot call on it a shot into on goal. the 18-yard box. There you go. Even though know, that was uh, coming from 30 yards out. Uh I'm going to call it a shot on goal. First shot on goal by the Lady Farmers of the match. I look so it didn't look like a pass to me. No, nope, definitely not a pass. That was a shot. <laughs> and what's uh, what's exciting too the the boys we play after they play after this game. They're they're own one in district. Salina Salina is also zero and one in district. Shot on goal by Salina. Another stop by Michelle Ortiz. Struggled a little bit there. Got a little nervous because the ball went between her legs, but she was, had control over it. Picked it up. Oh, it looks like they called offsides, maybe. Or a foul? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's a free kick for there the Lady Bombers. I'm assuming either either handball or yeah. offside. Yeah. I'm not sure. I, I didn't I get did, to see Yeah, it. I didn't see the call either. But There's a glare. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but um, with the boys' matchup tonight, yeah. Salina's 0-1. They lost in PKs to Gainesville. Okay. 4-3. to Um Oh, ball lost out of bounds by Lady Farmers on that one. And, and the I boys are 0-1. Urelli was out of position. I mean, I don't want to say out of position. I don't want to call it necessarily, but she was standing out of bounds when that ball hit her. Okay. So kind of made a little bit of an issue on that one. But. All right, Salina with the throw in. And good pressure by Kim C. Oh, that Salina turns the ball over. Lady Farmers kick it forward up the field. It looks like it rolls out of bounds. Salina will have the throw in. Salina th throws the throws the ball in. Lady Farmers win the ball. Now they attack the ball. Salina has to kick the ball out for the Lady Farmers, who have possession now. Lady Farmers have the ball about the 35-yard line with a throw in. This looks like their second attack offensively. Kim C does a good job receiving the the throw in and then kicks it forward and bounces out of a player and out of bounds. Salina goes quick with a throw in, but Lady Farmer's there to kick it back out. All right, so the ball went out of bounds. Salina has a throw in. They throw in a quick, hard throw in. Could have been a handball call there, but the ref didn't call it. Oh, they call a foul on the Lady Farmers for stepping in, impeding the mo motion or the movement, I guess you could say. So the Salina will set up for a free kick on the 40, on their 40. And they will look to launch it. No, they play short and quick. They switch the field. Salina dribbling past the 50. They're heading inside around the hashes, around the 30-yard line, inside to where the Lady Farmers defense is. And... They turn it over. Lady Farmers do a great job. And unfortunately, Lady Farmers get an unlucky touch, and it goes out of bounds. Slider does a quick throw in, and they're attacking on the left side, which would be uh, our Lady Farmers' right side. Salina's looking to cross the ball from the edge of the goal. 
And Lady Farmers do a great job of kicking it out and clearing it. Ball's not fully cleared. Salina goes again with another shot. No, they did quick pass inside the goal. Oh, it deflects off one of the Lady Farmers into the back of the goal, unfortunately. And they were doing pretty good there. Yeah, sorry about that. I had to run away, had a little situation with uh, somebody who was not able to get back into the stadium. One of our crew members got outside the fence and couldn't figure out how to get back in. So Did they get lost? Uh, I guess, yeah. Uh, so shot on goal and a score by Salina right there. Mm -hmm. Brings it to 10 to nothing, but 10, 10 hey, and a half minutes. It's way better than what they did last, last year. Absolutely. And I watched the scores. Or I, saw yeah. some, I saw you commenting yeah, on I it. was trying. Yeah, I remember commenting on Salina games, and, and uh, it was, uh, you know, obviously a similar situation to the fact that Salina is just a very strong team with a lot of strong players with potential, some potential D1 commits, but for sure some college commits. And uh, they, obviously they, they were great last year. They won state, so obviously they're really good. They're like the Highland uh, Park of 4A. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, and so it was it was interesting to watch them play last year. But uh, as we've talked about this whole match, is it's the small victories for Lady Farmers. And uh, we, we're trying to do whatever we can to... I didn't know if uh, that was a blur. Yeah, I think there was a, yeah, there was a smudge on the camera on that last shot. It <laughs> might be on the... On the glass. All right, Solana's attacking right above the 18-yard box. Janice does a great and job of coming great out. great save by Michelle Ortiz yeah. again. Janice forced the missed shot. She did a good job of stepping up and in then in the deflecting it or getting in the way of the Solana player from shooting. So did you notice one thing, Michelle, can she, she kind of tosses the ball yep. up. That's one thing that she can improve on by not tossing it, just kind of hold it out there like you're setting a oh, table. Oh, when she's kicking. Yeah, yeah I gotcha. that'll give her a little okay. more boost. Yep, yep. But well, again, like you said, they're playing defensive, so she really doesn't have many options to launch the ball sure, up there. Sure, sure. But great job of her getting that ball across midfield. And again, with the wind help, it is whipping pretty solid. I'd say it's blowing probably... 15, 20 miles an hour, pretty constant. Shot on goal by Solana Ooh. goes high. And. Have you noticed one thing, too, with the Solana girls? They are a little bit bigger and taller. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> 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 I know last year uh, when Solana was on the field, I went down there, and a lot of these girls have returned from last year's state championship. And I went down on the field, and just physically you could see a uh, substantial difference between their players and our players. I mean, you know, we've got, as you mentioned before, our, our girls are in the weight room and they're working on things and trying to get stronger and, and what have you. But, I mean, Saline has been, the, these girls have been working out and building up their program since they were in elementary school and had coaches that are talking to them about um, yes. their, you know, workout regimen and their and their eating regimen and, and things like that. And when you have that, you're going to have stronger, bigger athletes but also, when you've got, you know, twice as many students, a great a pass cross. by Salina. Oh. Great cross across the that's midfield. Tough. That, that's yeah. tough when you're not yeah. expecting it to come back. Well, and that's textbook for Salina right there. I mean, again, not me not knowing a lot about soccer, but I know that uh, I've seen enough that that's a textbook play. You hit a cross, get the defense all swarming towards the, the ball, or, or moving that you direction. You pull them away, yeah. You leave the middle open. Get that ball behind the defenders, and then you got an open shot to the goal. And it, and then it's just if the goalie gets lucky and can get in position. There's Kim C with the ball. Now, here's here's a question that I have uh, sure. for you. You might be able to answer. Why? So, obviously, um, uh -oh. no, there's no attack, got another by attack. Salina. Goes Ooh. high and above the goal. That's good. Um our girl, uh, I think that's Ureli, uh, Ureda up there on the yes. on the front. She so she starts the attack by the Farmersville. Kickoff. You know the kickoff, yeah. right? And, uh, and I understand kicking it backwards, but why is our player so far back? That's something that's either um, they don't realize how far they're playing, maybe because they're yeah. they've been told, or their 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 objective is to stay back and compact. Yeah. Um, another thing is it could be just not understanding or not paying attention yeah. or not yeah recognizing what. So it I've, I've honestly as a coach I've never been a huge fan of playing it back yeah. like that on a kickoff because yeah. again you can turn it over. Sure. Or and if you turn it over, you're in your zone of the yeah, field because they're you know. coming to press the ball and they sure. want to win. Absolutely. The ball. 
Salina gets another cross shot and tries to make an attack on that, but it looks like Ashley Clark does a nice job breaking that play up. Yes, that could have been dangerous right there. Send the ball out of bounds, but it does deflect off of, I don't know if that was Ashlyn who hit it last, but they are going to have a corner kick for Salina. And as you mentioned, one of the, uh, you know, kind of sneaky thing. I don't want to say sneaky, but one of the plays of, of kind of the chess match of soccer is let Salina get that ball. Don't sure. go help them out. Yeah, dude, it's just gamesmanship, you know. And, and totally appropriate, not anything that's in any way rude, just – Trying to run some time off the clock. There is just uh, over five minutes Long left. Long launch and headed over the goal by Salina. So it'll be another goal kick. Yeah. And, again, another victory that the farmers, Lady Farmers could look at is uh, Salina has not ha- not been very successful on their corner kicks. No, only when uh, they went game. short early. Yeah. And, and that, you know, again, that's a, one of those wins that, Lady Farmers can look at to say, yeah, we did a great job defending the goal, filling the box, and keeping them from scoring on corner kicks. There's another. Oh, see, I don't know if she was trying to get it to Kim C or just unlucky touch. Or when she and kicked not it. able to win the second ball on that one, but <laughs> nice there step in. You ready? He's got it. So in that case, it's like one too many dribbles on that thing. So right. you got to have your head up, kind of know where you're going to go. <coughs> Man, sorry about that. Again, that that midwinter cough. Yeah, and that awesome water bottle of water right next to you. That you have it. <laughs> yes, it is. We'll take a couple of sips from. But ball cleared out by the Lady Farmers, and Slide is going to have a throw in on the side. All right, there's Kim with a lot of pressure, and I mean, she's just you can physically see that she's going against somebody that's twice as tall as her. Yeah. She's probably bigger than Mr. G. <laughs> you know what? I mean, is I, I mean, I'm not kidding you. When I went down on the field last year, I'm going to tell you that that a couple of those girls for Salina, I was like, oh, you are six feet tall for sure. And six there's feet a missed shot. Soccer. Salina kicked it over, so it's going to be a goal kick for the <clears throat> Lady Farmers. And as you can tell, Michelle's going to just leisurely go get the ball. Yep. Yeah, she's just ticking ticking time off the clock right now. Yeah, my uh, so my nephew played soccer for McKinney High School okay. and ended up playing in college for a couple of years nice. and is still playing some uh, some club well senior league uh, kind of senior league yeah, semi pro type stuff up in uh, in Oklahoma, um, but he is six one six two. And that was obviously a big advantage uh, as a soccer player to be so over six feet tall. Uh, but it is interesting because he had a pretty strong team there at McKinney High. And there were, you know, six guys that were right at six feet <laughs> playing on, on McKinney's team. And, and Salinas, you know, the girls' team is very similar. They've got several girls that are, you know, 5'10", 5'9", 5'10", and when you've got – you know, Salina with the tag on the not only side. the height, but but you know it, it makes a big difference when oh nice save again by Michelle Ortiz makes a big difference when you are five ten going against somebody who's five foot. Yes, your strides are longer. That makes a huge difference right you know, there because now I can push the ball ahead. Yeah, and and, cover and, more ground, and you can yeah, and you can cover more ground, and it, and and okay. as crazy it is, you take less steps on the field, so it, you don't tire out as quickly either well you could tell there michelle playing the ball with the win and it bounced and it went all the way to the 20 and knocked out of bounds by salina <laughs> the salina player on that side of the field that i can't see the number number 12 it looks like she was not pleased with herself kicking that one out of bounds but throw in by the lady farmers and uh again one of those um you know not in any way trying to be negative lady farmers doing a great job against a really strong salina team yes this this game could be way worse oh, yeah. way out of hand but it is a little bit frustrating when you have a throw in right there and, and you, you throw it right to salina yeah so that's just something that the students or not students the players on the field have to be aware you know or just like talk on the field like yeah. hey if i'm here or you know and that's a great point communication oh my god that's the key with soccer communicating oh man if you ever watch a professional game they're constantly talking yeah oh michelle, oh, michelle loses diving. the handle of that one but 
Salina can't take care of it and kicks it out of bounds, and that's going to be a goal kick for Lady Farmers, and they come away virtually unscathed. But Michelle, she sold just, out. She sold oh, out okay. to make that save. I was nervous. Can't quite see down to that end of the field, and I thought we had an injury, but that's just a, somebody tying their shoe. So Yeah. Michelle had laid out completely for yeah. extension, made the save again. Yeah, but then deflected, couldn't couldn't reel it in. and uh, But, again, oh, they're saying that we deflected it? They're giving us yeah. giving Salina a corner kick? Unfortunately, yes. Oh, uh, But we got the post marked Go. up. We're a little oh, There's great coming. deflection. <laughs> the Salina girl is super upset about that one. Looks like number nine, eight or nine for... Uh, the Lady Bobcats, and she was super bummed because she thought she had a clear shot at the goal. But She's also thinking she thought a handball on, on Ashley. Yep. But Ashley had her hands yep. tucked in. Tucked in and just deflected herself. it right off her shoulder. Yeah, yeah. I think it's so. a great call. Yeah. Not yeah, sure. Even, look, Ashley's even, yep. she was even like, look, yeah, I wasn't yeah. doing nothing. I was just trying to protect yep. myself. So we got 20 seconds. They have to re- they have to kick the ball. Unfortunately, they can't just let the time go out, or else oh, they'd, no get a, kidding. they'd get okay. a foul or a yellow okay. card for wasting. Good guys. to know. But Ashland definitely is taking her time getting it in position. She now these refs might be nice enough to let them do that, but she can get it set and then kick it with two seconds left on the clock, and she'll yeah. be fine. Hopefully, oh maybe not. Maybe the refs is going to let. It go. Oh, yeah, there, there she goes. She's, yep. And uh, that's it. And the end of two full quarters of play. So the end of the match for the Lady Farmers and the Lady Bobcats. Uh, we, again, as we talked about this, I look at this as a success for the Lady Farmers because we knew going into this, you're going against the state defending uh, state champion, yep. defending state champions. And uh, they graduated a couple of players, but they had a lot of players return. You knew they were going to be strong. And they're 12 and 0 in in the season this year, and so our goal was keep the numbers low. And 11 to nothing. Yes, we want, maybe wanted to keep them to single digits, but that's well, only two over three single things digits. That, three things I take out of it: they 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 may have lost 11 zero, but it's better than 15, 12, or yep. 16 like last yep. last year. Yep. Also, they didn't have one of their best players, Natalie Taylor, yep. and then they lost their defensive Lord captain. Hall. Yeah. To an injury earlier. Yeah, and uh, still still able to defend quite a bit like that. Sure, it would have been nice to have a few more attacks on goal. Uh, obviously, it would have been nice to keep them to single digits or maybe even have an opportunity to score against them. No. Nope. But um, it, th- it's all about the small victories. Their goal was to pack it in and try to yep. make them, you know, just ride the storm, I guess you could yep. say. And, and without Michelle back there, it, it, it could have been ugly. Oh, it could have been. Michelle did a fantastic job in that goal. I mean, again, and we talked about this at the beginning of the broadcast, her goal is to have, obviously, more saves than she has goals. But with the number of shots on goals that the Bobcats were taking, I mean, it, it could have been a lot worse. And yes. she did a great job. Yes. So uh, that's the end of this, of this broadcast for the Lady Farmers. Certainly love having Coach Riffy up here and uh, teaching me a lot about soccer and especially the inside information about uh, some of the techniques. And he's, uh, but unfortunately, he's got to go down and coach the boys now. I do have to help out. So a bit. I can't have him up here during uh, during the boys' game, but I'll do the best I can to to commentate as we go through. But we do have uh, another match on the docket. The boys' varsity soccer team is going up against Salina yep. as well. we got 13 minutes on the clock, so we're going to take a 13-minute break. I'm going to eat a little pizza. Uh, nice. Big shout-out to Gwen May and Savvy May from Fine Arts on Main. They were able to bring us some treats for our crew and bring us some dinner, so I certainly appreciate that. Thank you so much for uh, giving me a call here in the middle of the broadcast and reminding me that food was on the way, and I, and I apologize if Savvy had to sit out in the cold weather for a little bit longer than she wanted to. Uh, but again, thank you to Coach Riffy and, and thank you to the crew, and we'll see you guys in about 12 minutes. Hey, well, I want to say thank you yeah. again. Seriously, it's been fun, and Absolutely. I appreciate it. Hey, and what you do with the kids and the program and everything here is uh, like Farmersville loves you. Thank you and very just much. just know that, that we all love you, even the teachers. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Because you can reach awesome. kids certain ways that we can't always. Yeah, it's true. And, yeah. and I have some great kids that work really hard in this program, yeah. and, and it is. And I do have a lot of kids that aren't involved in other things, so it's really nice to. And you're taking the time out to do this, too, out yeah. of your life. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. So, uh, But we'll be back with another soccer broadcast. I think we've got um, another one coming up maybe this Saturday. This Saturday is away. We're yeah, this way. It's next Saturday, I believe. Next Saturday we're back. Home or anyhow. Yeah, I think two away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, so we'll be back on uh, for that. But 
Thank you guys, and we'll see you in a little bit. All right, take care. You bet.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Farmer Stadium and tonight's matchup between the Fighting Farmers and Salina Bobcats. Our boys team, the boys varsity team is underway. Salina taking control of the ball to begin the first half. Um, the girls team played just before this girls varsity team and Salina Came out with a with a big victory, eleven to nothing over the Lady Farmers. But uh, as we talked about in the broadcast, if some of you got an opportunity to see that, the Salina Bobcats, the Lady Bobcats, are re are defending state champions and only graduated a few seniors last year. So we knew they were coming in real strong, and it had a lot of small victories for the Lady Farmers in that match. So uh, great job by the Lady Farmers, and now our Fighting Farmers. Coming out strong against the Bobcats and trying to get some activity against them. Currently in the district play, Salina lost in a shootout in their last matchup. Uh, so they are 0-1 and one in that district. And the Farmers on their first district match uh, lost that as well. So both teams coming in tonight's matchup looking for their first win in district play. And they called, Salina called for offsides on that attack right there. And so then uh, Farmers are going to take over right outside the box and uh, try to get something going on our end of the field. I want to send a big shout out to Coach Riffey. He's now on the sidelines for the Fighting Farmers. He was up here in the booth with me all throughout the girls' game and uh, doing a great job, kind of filling me in and, and learning me up on the soccer lingo and, and uh, some of the. Um, coaching tactics and, and player tactics in the game. So big shout out to him and thank you for uh, helping me out and, and then helping our program out and coming up and doing a little commentation. And it looks like uh, we do get a penalty call on the Farmers right there. Going to be a free kick for Salina. Uh, just a tripping call. Salina tries to get the ball and attacks high and long. And uh, not really do much with it on that one. And if you can't tell by the players' jerseys, we got a steady 15 to 20 mile an hour wind that's blowing from left to right as far as you look at the field. And so it is going against Salina and with Farmersville in this first half. It was a substantial factor for Salina in the, in the game with the girls earlier. They, uh, again, finished 11 to nothing, but... They scored seven goals in the first half, and so they only scored four in the second half. And in that second half, they were attacking into the win. So it was a big factor. Fighting Farmers trying to control the ball on that side of the field, far side of the field, and end up kicking it out of bounds. That's going to be a throw in for Salina right there at midfield. A couple of uh, uh, somewhat of attacks by Salina on the goal, but nothing that was uh, very successful. Salina going ahead and kicking it back to their goalie, trying to reset, trying to get things going. I do apologize to our viewers. We've not gotten an opportunity to get a roster for either one of the teams yet, so we're uh, working on that, see if we might be able to get that before the, the end of the first half. But um, our fighting farmers trying to, Trying to make something happen. Ball cleared out of bounds by Salina, and that's going to be Farmersville ball on the side with a throw in. As you can see, a lot of the players wrapped up in, in face gear, neck and face gear, or head uh, some beanies on their heads, and, of course, long sleeves, and a few of them in the, in the long tights because it is cold outside. I don't know if you have been outside recently, but with this wind blowing in a good, <coughs> excuse me, 20 miles an hour, and it is on the temperature about 42 degrees, that's putting the wind chill factor right down above freezing. Solana trying to control the offense and set something up from the backfield, not able to do it, sends it back to their goalie to try to reset and see if they can get it across the other side of the field and get something started. Farmersville doing a nice job being on the mark on the Salina players. Got a little defense, <laughs> defensive attack on that one. Salina clears it out in front of Farmersville. Scooped up by the goalie for 
the fighting farmers. Apologize about that. I'm definitely battling that, that midwinter cold. And so every once in a while, I'm going to have to go silent and cough off the air. I'm sure those of you that are joining in and viewing in the after this game is over um, don't really want to hear me coughing. Uh, looks like we've got a farmer, a fighting farmer, that took one hard into the shin. One of the Salina players coming over to consult him, talk to him, make sure he's okay. Definitely could tell. It certainly wasn't uh, malicious and not on purpose. We took his legs out, and we uh, get a free kick for the fighting farmers. Everybody trying to get in position. It looks like. Uh, Kanani Kanani is down there near the box, number 11 for the Fighting Farmers. A great free kick, but actually goes farther than the Farmers anticipated and out of bounds on the backside, so that's going to be a goal kick for the Bobcats. Got a big battle right there at midfield. Farmersville just trying to take over control. Salina doing a good job moving the ball around, but the fighting farmers just getting in there and uh, and messing up their offensive attack, which is exactly what Coach Walker is looking for. A big push coming in by the farmers, but no call by the referees. So it looked like that was a that was just a collision. And uh, no malicious intent or uh, pushing foul by either Salina or uh, Farmersville. So Salina gains control but kicks it out of bounds. That's going to be a throw-in for the fighting farmers on the far side of the field. Did had a lot of rain the last couple of nights. Those of you that have lived in the area obviously know that. But if you're tuning in from another part of the country or even another part of the world, which you often have, and our viewers um, it had a lot of rain over the last uh, couple of days. Of course, we had freezing and snow last week, which all melted off, and the ground was still real wet and saturated, and the water table real high, and uh, had a lot of rain these last couple of days, which has created some flooding situations around in our area. But the field is dry as a as a turf field goes. We've got a referee question over here. He's come over here uh, to the sideline to talk to Coach Walker. Try to find out what's going on. Not sure what's happening. Uh, the side judge is making some comments to the ref. Oh, talking to one of the players. The players. One of the players had a. Uh, neck uh, warmer on his neck and then was pulling that up around his face and they're saying that's not legal wear for uh, the players on the field. So uh, we got a, we had an official stoppage of the clock right now. So we had 30 minutes and 43 seconds on the clock and the referee is trying to get him to reset the clock. Trying to get him, I think, to go back to 314. 31 minutes and 40 seconds left on the clock, but that's going to take a little minute for them to be able to reset that clock. Obviously, it was an oversight by the referees on uh, on this one, but uh, we had three players on the Farmersville team that had neck gaiters, is what you call them, uh, 
uh, warms your neck, and you can kind of pull it up over your mouth, and, and that is not uh, what I'm guessing based on what I saw in the conversation between Coach Walker and the referees, but that is not uh, allowed in the uniform for high school soccer. You can have a beanie on your head and gloves and long sleeves, but can't have that neck gaiter. So we had those three players have to take those off, and so they officially stopped the clock. As we learned from Coach Riffey in the, in the girls' game, uh, unlike World Cup and uh, Major League Soccer and, and other um, across-the-pond uh, football games, uh, there is no extension of time in high school soccer. So if if there's an injury, pause in the game, or if there's a pause in the game because of something like this where we had, a, had to change some uniform situations or substitution issue or something like that, they do not stop the clock. The clock keeps running. But if there is a length of time that is an official pause in the action, they, the officials will put up an X sign with their arms and stop the clock officially, that, but there will not be time added on to the end of the halves. Uh, so we've got 40 minutes on the clock. That is exactly how much time they will play, unless, again, like I said, the referees stop the time, which is what they did just a moment ago, uh, because that is something that the referees should have paid attention to at the beginning of the game, and they missed it. Not saying anything negative towards the refs. It's just a lot going on, and and maybe they didn't see the players pull their neck gaiters up over their mouths or anything like that yet. So Salina trying to take control over uh, the ball right now, trying to make something happen, and um, not able to get anything going. Farmersville able to interrupt it, bring it back towards the center of the field, and then trying to get some offensive action going on our side, but no doing. Salina resets and sends it around to the far side of the field. <coughs> Broken up by Farmersville. And a little bit of a push off between uh, Salina and the Farmers players, but cleared out by Farmersville and sends it out towards the Farmersville bench. And that is uh, going to be a throw in for Salina. 29 minutes left in the first half. As we mentioned before, this is the second district meeting or second district game for both Salina and Farmersville. Uh, both teams take, took a loss in that first match that they had. So therefore, both teams looking for their first district victory. Salina trying to control the ball in the center of the field. Farmersville trying to clear it out. A little bit of a miss on that one. Cross shot by Salina. But the wind takes it and sends it back towards the center of the field and Farmersville able to grab it. Salina will be able to take it out and trying to get a shot on the goal and not able to cross it up. Farmersville able to jump and kind of disrupt that attack on the goal and kicked it hard right and out of bounds and that's going to be a goal kick for the Farmers. Again, as I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, the girls' varsity team played before this, started at 5.30. Uh, they also played Salina. Salina, the defending state champions, coming back uh, with a top 10 ranking currently in state and an opportunity to possibly make it back towards the state uh, semifinals and finals. And the Lady Farmers, knowing that they had a, a pretty pretty tough road ahead of them against Salina, did some some great stuff. Uh, not an offensive, uh, I mean, offsides call on Salina. Sure looked like from this angle that the Salina player was out in front of the defenders for Farmersville, but the referee definitely has a better angle than I am at that point and did not call the offsides. So an attack on the goal deflected by our goalie and back out. Another attack goes wide left, and uh, that is going to be a, looks like a corner kick because it was deflected off of one of the Farmersville's players. So Salina is going to have a corner kick, attacking on the ball. Not sure if we can get a camera angle over that far into the corner. But attacks it, and that looks like it was deflected by our goalie. So a mad attack by our goalie on that one to be able to deflect that ball up and over the goal and sends it out of bounds. And um, Okay. That was not deflected by our player because that's going to be a goal kick for the Farmers. So we didn't touch it. I thought they did. That means that the crossbar got a hold of that one. So saved by the crossbar. Certainly love it when the goal helps you and not hurts you. 
as I learned when I was having Coach Riffy call a girls game, um, when you do a, a goal kick like that or a throw in, it's not always uh, so important to get the first ball. Uh, but if you can't get the first ball, to really focus on getting that second ball and controlling the second ball. And a lot of times you can have a little bit better attack if you interrupt and take uh, intercept that second ball, which is what happened right here for the Farmers. And Salina just tried to clear it out. They did, cleared it out of bounds, and now the Fighting Farmers have a throw in on the near side of the field, and it looks like they're throwing it in from below the 20-yard line, the football American football 20-yard line. So a nice throw in by Farmersville. Kanani Kanani in the box, not able to get his feet on it, scooped up by the goalie for Salina. Uh, but pretty exciting attack there. A little bit of an attack on a goal. Didn't really have a shot on a goal, but... Definitely had the ball in the box. It made Salina nervous on that one, and that is what we're looking for for the Farmersville side of the ball. Ball attacked by Salina. Gets it across midfield now. Just a little bit of a ping pong back and forth. Farmersville trying to make an attack down the sidelines. Interrupted by Salina. Comes into the center of the field, but way too many purple jerseys in the way. Clears it out to the outside with a streaking player come down the left side. Uh, but again, purple jerseys and an attack on the goal. Got, that looks like it deflected off the face of number four for the Farmersville. And then the ball cleared out of bounds by Farmersville, and Salina is going to have a throw in. No question that the wind is not slowing down. And so it is a major fact right now on those high balls that are kicked in either direction. It either holds it up in the air uh, when it's kicked into the wind or uh, sends it sailing down the field in the opposite direction. An attack on the goal by Salina and another post shot. Deflects off of the post, but Salina able to get on the attack. And send that one in the goal, but there's a whistle blown by the side judge, and I'm not sure they're going to give that goal to, nope, they are not giving that goal to Salina. The Salina player was real upset, but it. Uh, I'm not sure what the call was. I don't think you can be offsides in that situation, so maybe a handball, uh, but we get a free kick by the goalie and no score for Salina, so we still have a 0-0 total on the scoreboard. Salina trying to make an attack on the far side of the field. Farmersville doing a great job trying to mix that up. The ball advanced uh, down towards uh, the goal for Farmersville and just cleared out of bounds and yes, sent it out of the end zone. So unfortunately, Salina is going to have another opportunity for a corner kick, but uh, good defensive play for the Farmers just trying to get that ball out of there as they were making a strong attack towards the goal. 23 minutes left in the first half. Salina with a corner kick. So far, Farmersville's done a nice job defending these attacks by Salina, so let's see if they can do it again. A lot of communication going on between the Bobcat players. Sends it in front of the goal and headed way up in the air and over and out of the goal. And no score for Salina. So, apologize. Uh, we do have on the scoreboard right now, it says 1-0 Bobcats. But there was confusion in the scoreboard here in the stadium. And they put a score up. Uh, but that did not. That was not correct. The they took that goal away from Salina, so it is zero to zero. And Farmersville now has a goal kick after that ball went sailing out uh, over the top of the goal. The big kick by Farmersville down towards midfield. Salina able to put some uh, head on it, uh, but Farmersville able to clear it out and send it back down towards the goal. And now Farmersville trying to make an attack. As the ball is making its way towards the goal and not able to defend it. Communication between a couple of the farmers down there. One of them trying to say, hey, we had an opportunity to maybe steal that away if you guys would have come with me. Great interception by Farmersville right there. 
A little bit too hard off the chest at number two and sends it out of bounds. And, but that was deflected off of Salina, so that's going to be a Farmersville throw in. I apologize there. I had to step away from the microphone for a second. And while that happened, we almost had a shot on goal by the Farmers. Great attack into the box, but Salina just was able to step in and intercept that pass and clear it out. Salina has control over it now on the far sideline, trying to get a throw in about midfield. Farmersville doing their best to disrupt those passes. Salina sending it back to their goalie. Goalie trying to clear it out to the other side. Farmersville trying to get back into it, and they do a nice job. Send it off to one of their own players. Tries to send it across to the center. Just not quick enough to get there before Salina intercepts that pass. Farmersville doing a nice job communicating with each other and trying to set up the play. Kanani Kanani just gets a big old boot on that one and sends it down to the goalie, but just tried to clear the ball out of the center of the field. Getting pretty congested there in the center and just wanted to get it out of the way. Salina trying to make an attack on the ball. Gets a nice pass down on the left side of the field. Good positioning by Salina. Gets it back to the center over to the top side of the field, but the purple jersey is just able to get in the way and interrupt a little bit too much for Salina on that one. Salina back across and a shot on goal, but Farmers, goalie right there, double zero, scoops it up and stops that attack. Our goalie for Farmersville telling them, hey, you guys get on down there, clear out. We got an injury on the field for Farmersville. Looks like somebody uh, got took a knee. Maybe impact two knees. Uh, trainer, Coach L, on his way. Going out there to take a look at a Farmersville player right now. As we mentioned before, it's Coach L doing a great job uh, building up that training program. We got it started last year and uh, really got a lot of, lot of students involved. And this year they've been able to kind of expand on that and continue the growth of that program and, and keep stuff going and and it's been vital to our athletic development and our athletic program. Our players have had an opportunity to get treated, been taken care, well care of when they get injuries on the field, and then also preparation pre-game and post-game to try to stay away from injuries. we got a player who's up on his feet but still hobbling. Uh, he's going to come off the field and get a substitution. Number 16 going to go in for, uh, looks like that was number, uh, number 10, number 15, who got injured right there. Number 10. So we did stop the clock, and that's what I was mentioning too before. The referees do have an opportunity to go ahead and stop the clock when there's an injury like that. Because we mentioned too, again, the uh, there is no extension of time in high school soccer, unlike World Cup soccer or Major League soccer. Uh, when there is an injury on the field, they just keep the clock running, but then the referee adds more time at the end of the game. They don't do that in high school, so whatever you see on the clock is the amount of time that is left in the match. So 19 minutes, just under 19 minutes left in the first half. Salina trying to get something started, but too many purple jerseys in the way. And now number seven for Farmersville trying to make an attack, dribbling all down the field, gets a shot towards the goal. Unfortunately, goes a bit outside, but... Congratulations to the Fighting Farmers, the first official attack on the goal. First official shot on the goal by the Fighting Farmers. We are 18 minutes, uh, so just under 20 minutes into the first half, but there haven't been a lot of shots on goal from, from Salina either. We're still in the single digits for them, 
Uh, but a great opportunity for Farmersville to make their way down to our end of the field and take a shot on goal. Goal kick, uh, quick pass into the side by Salina. And still keeping that ball on this side of the field is exactly what Coach Walker is going to want to have happen and deflect it off the Salina players. Farmersville is having a throw in, trying to get something in quick. Goes off the head of one of our Farmersville players. Salina trying to get it to be a little fancy with the kick and the head bob, but not able to do much with it. Cross back to the center. Oh, just a foot missing it, and but cleared out by Salina, and that's going to be another throw in for the Farmers. Farmers trying to get quick to the ball on the side. Maybe they can get somebody caught off guard. Not able to do it, but gets the ball in. And another throw in for Farmersville. Farmersville gets it quick to one of their players, kind of pops it up over the top of the Salina player, trying to see if they can get something to happen, kind of lose control of his footing, trips each other up, but uh, no issues, no harm to, done to either player, and we keep going. And let's call that a second attack on the goal right there. Kind of up high and got it up in the air, but definitely a shot back towards the goal for Farmersville. Unsuccessful, but a great attempt. Huge clear out by one of the Farmers. Takes it out as sideways, out of bounds, and that's going to be a throw in. But it looks like, I didn't see that, but it looks like it was deflected off of Salina, so therefore that's going to be a Farmersville throw in. Just inside the, what's about the 20-yard line on the football field, the American football field. So the referees did bring that ball all the way back to almost a 40-yard line is where they're saying the ball went out. The Fighting Farmers got it in but not able to control it, but doing a great job disrupting the passes by the Salina Bobcats and trying to gain control over on this end of the field. Salina gets it through the purple jerseys, but again stepped right in front and separated that ball from the attack. Number three for Salina, trying to see something on the outside. Takes it back to the inside. Is able to dribble through traffic, but deflects it off of one of the Farmersville players. Farmersville able to clear it out a little bit, back towards the 30, but another attack by Salina. Too much curve on it. Goes right into the feet of Kanani Kanani for the Farmers and able to get that ball down to this end of the field. There's no question that Farmersville is utilizing the wind that's blowing this direction and trying to make something happen with it gets it deflected off one of the Salina players. Not sure if they're going to send it to the goalie, which they end up doing. Um, but he picks it up inside the goal box and wants to go ahead and kind of reset on the other side of the field. Gets a big punt out towards midfield. Headed by one of the Salina players. Sent back out to the right side, trying to take it down the sideline. And got three purple jerseys in the way. And Farmersville able to clear it out. And Salina has to reset the offense. Salina trying to make a, an attack. And uh, I, based off of what Coach Riffey was talking about earlier, that's kind of a modified 3-5-2 Attack they've got going on here. Nice job by number seven for Farmersville. Trying to get something started. Gets it past one defender and not able to get it in between the other defenders and deflect it off of Kanani out of bounds. And Salina is going to have a throw in on the far side. But again, one of the big victories for Farmersville at this point. They're keeping a lot of the action down on their side of the field. And when you've got the advantage of a wind blowing 30 miles an hour going your direction, you want to utilize that as much as possible. Salina with the throw in.
Good thing started with 13 minutes left in the first half. Ball cleared out. Back to their goalie. Goalie takes it over. Gives it a punt. Don't think he did that on purpose, but oh, I apologize. There was an offsides call right there, so Salina going to have a free kick, and the goalie just kind of kicks it across the center field and, and says, you guys go. Take it and go. Salina bringing it back across the midfield. Reversing the direction. Gets it over to the far side, but not able to handle it. Farmersville going to go ahead and take over with a throw in on the side. Gets it in quick and off the head of one of the Bobcats. And somehow it was out of bounds, I guess. Maybe he was out of bounds when he made contact with it. So Salina gets a throw in. Tries to sub start something up the middle. Realizes he can't make that happen. Kicks it back out to the backside. Reset the offense. Sends it down towards the center. Headed out of the way by one of the fighting farmers. Farmersville able to try to clear it out. Gets a little bit of a clearance. Salina trying to keep the ball going but not able to control it. Goes out of bounds and Farmersville's got a throw in. Farmersville trying to get the ball in as quick as possible to catch Salina off guard and out of position. Gets it to the center of the field. Salina tries to deflect and get the second ball. Not able to do it. Gains control after a few touches. Takes it back to the midfield. Trying to reset the offense and see if they can send it across the other side of the field and w spread out the defense. Does a nice job of it, but Farmersville just getting in there, making it real hard for Salina to do anything. Number four for Farmersville goes ahead and clears it out of the sidelines and says, hey, let's take some time, let's reset, let's get back where we're at, force Salina to do a throw in, see if we can get something started here. Salina trying to get it back to the center, see if they can start something, but not able to do it. Kicked out of bounds, and that's going to be a throw in for Farmersville and try to move the ball back down towards our side of the field. Salina controlling most of the attacks on this side of the field. Ball kicked out of bounds, deflected off of, actually cleared out by one of the Farmers players. Going to be a throw in for Salina as they get a substitution. Number five coming in on the field for Salina. Just under 10 minutes left in the first half. Still got a 0-0 score. Salina able to get it down the line pretty solid, but unfortunately, back kicks it out of bounds. And def wow, okay. I didn't see that. Deflected it off of one of the Farmers players, and so this is going to be a corner kick for Salina. So far, I think two or three corner kicks Salina has had, unsuccessful on all of them with basically that same result. A hard kick into the box and headed way out of bounds. Farmersville gets the ball back into the field of play. But doing a nice job, just kind of taking their time on this one. Nobody's in a big rush. Farmersville knew coming into this game that Salina was going to be a tough opponent. 
And you can tell that Farmersville is trying to do everything they can to uh, disrupt the play of Salina, but also just kind of slow down the pace, not let them make too many attacks on the goal. And, uh, and it's, so far it's working. Got a hard shot cross. And Salina not able to handle it. Cleared out by Farmersville. Salina trying to bring it back up to center. Farmersville says no, clears it out again. Salina trying to take it up the right side this time. The far side of your field and your view of play. Salina bringing it into the center. A lot of fancy footwork from the white and orange. Gets it to the middle, and do we see any calls? No calls from the referees, and that looks like that is going to be a score for Farmersville. I mean, for Salina. I apologize. So, Salina getting on the board first, but... Seven minutes left in the first half. As I mentioned before, uh, Farmersville knew going into this matchup that Salina was going to be a strong opponent, but uh, they've done a great job defending the goal and kind of keeping them out of their offensive attack. A big shot by Farmersville over the top of all the Salina players, and Farmersville trying to get the ball at our end of the court, trying to maybe see if they can get something Started a quick response to that goal scored by Salina. As you see on our scoreboard, it says two, but it is only one. Only one score for Salina, so it is one to nothing. Throw in by Farmersville. Trying to head it back towards the goal. Maybe try to get some offensive attack. Referee got in the way, not on purpose, but just got in the way of that play. <clears throat> not able to make something happen, but the ball cleared and cleared all the way out of bounds. And this is going to be a throw in for Salino. Five and a half minutes left in the first half. Salina has the throw in on their side of the field, brings it back out to about midfield. Seeing if they can kind of reset the offense. Nice little disruption by the Farmers. And down, almost in position to try to be able to make an attack on the goal. Not, not successful on that one. But challenging the goalie, trying to disrupt his plan to make some, <coughs> excuse me, to start something off. Salina able to get past the defense on that one for the Farmers, but clears the ball out of bounds. And Farmersville is going to take over on the far side of the field with a throw in. Big coughing attack by myself. I apologize about that. And by the way, those of you that might be just joining us, my name is Mr. G. I'm the AV director here at Farmersville. Have an opportunity every once in a while when, uh, when it's difficult to get some commentators uh, to be able to call some of the games, especially this year. Got a new assistant who's come on, uh, another teacher, Mr. Beckham, and he is uh, teaching the intro AV classes and the graphic design classes and handling the yearbook, but he is able to be involved in our live streaming productions so he can be in the booth kind of taking over things. Uh, got a great crew of kids working tonight's games on the AV production team. Uh, I think we've got Devlin Dalton, who's handling the switching uh, right now, which means she's the one in charge of calling the camera shots and choosing which camera needs to be up on the screen that you're watching. Salina so making an attack towards the goal. Uh, gets a big throw in, gets it past all the Farmersville players. Uh, not able to do much with it, but... The Farmersville goes ahead. Farmersville goes ahead and clears it out, and takes it out in front of the goal line. So therefore, it's just going to be a throw-in for Salina from that corner of the field. Got a Salina player who's taking a big running jump, trying to get that ball as close to the goal as possible. Headed by Salina, not able to control it, bounces off the back of one of the Salina players, and they're going to call a handball. 
Farmers Hill is going to have a free kick from the goal box. Three minutes and ten seconds left in the first half. Farmersville trying to do the best they can to get that ball at their end of the field. And unfortunately, nobody touched that after that goal kick, and it goes out of bounds, and Salina is going to have a throw in on the side. Also, a couple more people that are on the broadcast team for tonight's live stream. I've got uh, Giselle, uh, who is uh, part running a camera, part helping out in the booth. And Luis, Luis Cardenas, is on one of the other cameras. Um... I've got Eileen uh, Rosales, who was helping out earlier. I think she's had to take off, uh, but she was helping out during the girls' game. And Imlin is handling one of the cameras and also just kind of bouncing around. So great crew for tonight's broadcast, and they're all helping each other out, bouncing between cameras and helping out in the booth and trying to make things get, get things going. Throw in by Salina. Gets all the way past and out of bounds. Gets the ball thrown out of bounds, and that's going to be a, a goal kick for Farmersville. Goal kick on the goal line, trying to make something happen. Farmersville's got a goal kick right here, trying to get things going with one minute, 35 seconds left. As we talked about before, there's a steady wind blowing of about 20 miles an hour right now from left to right on your screen, so from uh, west to east, and uh, that is at the farmer's advantage, and of course, they're trying to do as much as they can to get that ball down there into the field with just uh, over a minute left in the half. Salina trying to make an attack on the goal right here. Uh, about two minutes ago was able to be successful on attack on goal and get the first score of the game. Uh, but Farmersville's trying to see if they can rally and get something going, gets that ball down towards their end of the field, but an easy scoop up by the goalie for Salina. Salina definitely had substantially more shots on goal uh, than Farmersville in this matchup, but <coughs> excuse me, not enough to really make a difference. Farmersville trying to keep the ball on there into the field. Got 30 seconds left in the game, trying to do the best they can to keep it that direction. Salina changes directions. Farmersville disrupts it, gets it back to the center of the field, trying to get something going on the right side of the field here. Salina able to intercept it, send it back to the center. 18 seconds left. Salina trying to make an attack with just a few seconds left in the game. Stumbles up on the dribble right there. Farmersville clears it out down the center, down towards the center of the field. Salina tries to get something going back on the right side. Not going to have enough time to be able to make any kind of attack. And ball cleared out of bounds by Farmersville. Great play by the Fighting Farmers to run the clock out and end the first half. So, at the end of one half of play, we've got a score of Salina 1, the Fighting Farmers 0. We'll take a 10-minute break right here and give the boys an opportunity to rest up, grab a little water, warm up a little bit on the sidelines, reconfigure what they think they might be able to do to make an attack on the ball, and we'll be back with uh, the Farmersville Fighting Farmers versus Salina Bobcats at Farmer Stadium here in Farmersville, Texas.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to kick off the second half of the boys' varsity soccer game. You have Farmersville Fighting Farmers taking on the Salina Bobcats here at Farmers Stadium. Referees making their way out on the field, so we're getting ready to get started. Just got a wave from Coach Riffy, who's down on the sidelines of the boys' game. He was uh, up here commentating for the girls' game, so big shout-out to him. Thank you very much for making that happen, helping uh, guide me along in the soccer lingo and the the uh, plan of attack for the different coaches and the different players. Get the official signal from the referees to start the clock. Farmersville going ahead and taking control of the ball to get things started. Kick it back to the back line to try to start that offensive off and kick it down the field in the center of the field down the right side. Again, as we mentioned in the first half, if you were here for part of the broadcast, the uh, Fighting Farmers and Salina coming into tonight's game both with a 0-1 uh, and one record in district, so both teams looking for their first win in district play. Fighting Farmers, uh, knowing that Salina is a little bit stronger of a team overall, has a longer history in their program, and uh, uh, got club soccer they've got playing, they have teams that start out in the elementary level and work their way all the way to the junior high level. And Farmersville only in their fifth year of uh, UIL soccer play. So still a fledgling program. Um, mostly coming into tonight's game just doing the best they can to, to keep Salina from scoring and then seeing if they get some sneaky opportunities to maybe throw in a score on our own end. So they did an excellent job in the first half, kept Salina to one goal. And uh, they had probably 15 shots on goal, uh, but Farmersville doing a nice job of stopping that and disrupting those shots and got a little help from the goalpost a couple of times. And uh, still very much in this game right now. Salina with an attack on goal, and just like I was talking about, that ball sit high above our goalie's head and uh, deflected up and then off of the cross post and does go out of bounds, but because our goalie put a hand on it, before it went out of bounds, that's going to be a corner kick for Salina. So far, Farmer's done a nice job stacking the box and marking up on the Salina players and keeping them from being able to make a very good attack on the goal when they have a corner kick like that. <coughs> Apologize for the cough. Wow, ball deflected off of the goalie and then off the crossbar back at one of the Farmersville players and then kicked out of bounds. What an amazing job to keep that ball out of the goal. <coughs> I do apologize. I'm still suffering from that midwinter cold that seems like it has been attacking everybody. Ball kicked in from the corner kick by Salina. Tried to get ahead on it, not able to be successful, and deflected out of bounds by the Farmers and back to another corner kick for Salina. It is a frigid evening here in Farmersville. We are, uh, I think, on the temperature right about 40 degrees, but the wind's constantly blowing a good 15, 20 miles an hour. That's going to bring the wind chill down to right above freezing. So it is definitely a factor out there on the field trying to make something happen. Luckily, the rain what we had <clears throat> all day yesterday and all day today uh, subsided right before we started playing the girls game. So haven't had to deal with any of that right now, which of course would make this even more miserable. Uh, ball deflected off the head of Salina, out of bounds, and that ends the three consecutive corner kicks that Salina had, trying to make attacks on goals, and Farmersville successful blocking all of them. So fighting Farmers have an opportunity to do a goal kick on this one. Again, as we mentioned before, that wind, you can't see the flags blowing right now, but it is blowing a good 15 to 20 miles an hour from left to right on your screen, so west to east. So that means it is right in the face of the goalie for Farmersville trying to make an attack on it right now. Usually able to get that ball and clear it out to midfield, and this one not even 10 yards shy of the midfield point. Salina able to gain control of it right there, but Farmersville doing a great job marking up on their players, trying to disrupt the passes and get in between them. 
Coach Riffey uh, in the girls game gave me some insight on that and, and made a statement that uh, after he said it, I questioned him just to, to understand more what he meant. Oh, wow. And, uh, oh, an opportunity by Salina. The attack by one of the players in the box. Our goalie blocked that ball out, uh, but it deflected it right to the feet of one of the Salina players, and that player able to send it right back in the goal. The goalie not able to get up quick enough off the ground. Had a couple of players that were in his way around him, and that's another score for Salina. Salina able to put another score on the board and go up two to nothing. Biggest thing that has to happen right now is Farmersville's just got to get on the offensive. They've got to go ahead and take that opportunity. Uh, looks like we had a little, um, uh, I don't know if that was a handball or maybe a, a little push. Whistle was blown, and that's a free kick for Farmersville. <coughs> a big boot into the wind. <coughs> Down to the center of the field. Farmersville not able to control it. Salina grabs control over it, sends it right back down. Trying to figure out what direction they want to set the ball up. Gets it back over to the near end of the field. Sends it back across. Disrupted by number seven for Farmersville. And number 11 able to get it in the center. Send it back out to the outside, trying to get something maybe down the line or cross field. Tries to send it cross field, deflected off the hip of the Salina player. And you can see right there, that is the sting of the cold weather. That gave him a quite a shot right into the left hip. And he is hobbling. That does not feel good. That was a sting like crazy. Kicked hard. And off of the left hip of that player, still able to get back into the game. Farmersville sends it back across, but unfortunately nobody there to receive it. And out of bounds, that's going to be throw in for Salina. So we do have a score of two to nothing. It does say one to nothing on our scoreboard on the screen right now, but it is two to nothing. Salina able to score with five minutes into the second half here. Ball cleared out of bounds by Salina, but that's good for Farmersville. Takes over control on our near side of the field. Able to make the attacks and try to make something happen on our side of the field. All right, so just had uh, our producer for today's show, my uh, cohort in uh, teaching here in the AV production program, uh, Mr. Beckham, came in to let me know that uh, we've got some technical issues with the keyboard on our pro on our computer. <coughs> so unable to make the adjustment to the scoreboard. Uh, so I'll just keep you informed. It still is two to nothing. Bobcats with two, Farmersville zero, uh, Farmersville. <coughs> Able to deflect an attack on the goal by Salina. Uh, not a not a hard attack on that one, uh, but uh, definitely one that got near the goal, but able to send it out. And now we've got a throw in on the <coughs> excuse me on the far side of the field by the Farmers. Thank you. 
All right, I apologize about that, ladies and gentlemen. As I mentioned to you before, I've got a little bit of a bronchitis hanging on every once in a while. I'll just have a coughing attack and, and try to get back into that. Farmersville trying to gain control over possession and not able to keep it in bounds. Deflects it out of bounds. we got to throw in by Salina. Farmersville trying to jump in front of the ball right there. Sends it over the top of Salina player, and he's able to gain control over it. Try to get an offensive attack by the Bobcats, but disrupted by Farmersville for a little bit. <coughs> and attempted attack on goal thwarted by the Farmers. Salina crosses it across to the other side of the field. Bobcats send it down to the center, headed out of, back, out of the way by Farmersville, but not enough, and a stolid attack by the Bobcats into the upper corner of the goal and not able to be controlled by the Farmers goaltender, and that gives Salina a 3 to nothing lead. This is the moment where Farmersville has got to gather themselves and realize they're still very much in this game. They're only down 3 nothing. They got just under 30 minutes in the first half or the second half left over. I know they haven't had a lot of attacks on goal, but a lot of things can happen in an entire half of play or almost an entire half. This was a bit of concern for the coaching staff. The fact that the wind is blowing at 15, 20 miles an hour constant, gusting about 30, and the wind is with Salina right now going against the farmers, and it does make a big difference. When you can get that ball up in the air and it sends just a little bit farther than you anticipate or a little bit faster, a little bit harder, when it's got that wind helping behind it. Farmersville trying to... Get something going down the left-hand side. Able to gain control. Gets shoved out of bounds, and the whistle is called. So, therefore, Farmersville is going to get a free kick right here on the sidelines right in front of their own bench. One of the newer additions to the program, you can barely see it in the bottom corner of your screen, there is a wind block uh, slash sunshade. Uh, that the Farmersville uh, Farmers have an opportunity to put over their bench on their side of the field. And just a little bit of a gamesmanship, let's call it. Uh, they, they only purchased one of those shields, so therefore the visiting team has to deal with the elements. And uh, throw in by Salina, lost control over it, barely got it in. Farmersville able to try to take advantage of that, gets the attack coming around on their side, Cleared out by Salina. Farmersville with a throw in just inside the football, American football 10 yard line. This is the best opportunity Farmersville has had this half to try to make an attack on the goal. Throw in comes in by Farmersville. Try to handle it on the far side of the field. Cleared out of bounds by Salina, but the question is, is that a corner kick or a goal kick? But the referee says that deflected off the farmers, and the farmers do not agree. They are putting their hands up in question saying, hey, we did not hit that ball. Salina knocked it out of bounds. Goal kick by Salina just sends it across instead of trying to send it down the field, trying to get an offense started from the far side of the field. Gets it down the left side, out and out of the way of the Farmers. The Farmers on those last few minutes doing exactly what they need to do and get that ball to our end of the field and try to make something happen. Cleared to the center of the field. Off the chest, back unfortunately to the feet of the Bobcats. <laughs> the 
goal kick for Farmersville. And just a bit too much curve on that one and a bit too much wind blowing that direction. Ball goes out of bounds. That's going to be a throw in for Salina. Number 12 for the Bobcats. Sending a little signal to one of his players to say, hey, are you going to come and do this throw in or what? So it looks like that player was just walking past and goes <clears throat> substitution. Well, that player heads around back side of the field. And a shot by Salina, able to get it off the side of his foot and around the goalie for Farmersville and into the goal. And that's going to put Salina up four to nothing. Farmersville gets something started on this part after that goal score by Salina. Almost get an opportunity to make an attack on the goal right there, but sends it across the field and back into the feet of Salina. Salina able to control it, sending it down the left-hand side, trying to reverse the direction of the action, seeing if they can make something happen coming around here to the center of the field. Interrupted a little bit by Farmersville, but another attack on the goal, but this time deflected out by Farmersville. And the second attack by Salina sends it wide and outside of the goal and out of bounds, and that's going to be a goal kick for Farmersville. We do have a player down on the ground up in the far corner of the goal box. Not exactly sure what did it went down on that one, but as we were talking about before, with with Salina up four to nothing, this is definitely the time that Farmersville's got to gather the troops. They've got to kind of get revitalized and uh, realize that there's still there's still time for them to get some production and maybe get down and get on the offensive side of the field and make some attacks on the goal. Done a great job defending their own goal at this point and really disrupting the play of Salina. Salina a bit quicker than Farmersville on the offensive side and a little bit more, um, I guess, conditioned to set up the plays. But Farmersville doing a great job getting in between the players, getting in between the passes, Running through the players, as Coach Riffey mentioned to us during the girls' game, and able to disrupt some of the activity that's going on with Salina. But even with all of that, Salina has been able to put four goals on the board. We got a substitution. Farmersville player comes out, gets replaced by number sixteen, and. You have a corner kick by Salina. Thought that last one was going to be a goal kick, but I guess it deflected off of one of Farmersville players. Trying to clear it out by Farmersville. Sends it to the middle of the field, and Salina just goes ahead and puts it to the back and resets their offense. Nice little reverse pass to himself. Left foot trying to make it towards the goal, but not able to do it. That does go out of bounds, and that does not touch one of the Farmersville players. That's a goal kick for Farmersville. 22 minutes left in the game. And as I mentioned before, we've got some technical difficulties going on with our keyboard on our, our computer. But the score is Salina 4, not 3, and Farmersville 0. Farmersville now setting up for the goal kick. A 
Send it down the right side of the field. Salina able to put a foot on it. Send it back, and Farmersville kicks it out of bounds, clears it out, and a throw in for Salina. Salina sees an open player right in the middle of the field. Farmersville able to react and get them to send it back and try to set up their offense, which gives the Farmers an opportunity to reset their defense. Farmersville able to try to take that one away. And they are successful. Now trying to make an attack down on the field. Clears it out down the center. Goalie comes way out of the box and boots it way up into the stands on the visiting side of the field. Tossed in by one of the fans. And a throw in by the Farmers. Farmersville ready to throw it in. On their side of the field, gets it in, but deflected by one of the heads of Salina. Salina making their way, crossing it back across the other side of the field, coming to the near side of the field, but not able to handle it very much. And kicked out of bounds, but the contact between the Farmers and Salina calls a whistle by one of the referees, a free kick for Salina, reset the game. Gets their, their offensive set up by the defenders on the back side of the field. Tries to get it across and outside to the far side. Brings it back around. And back to the goalie to try to reset and get the offensive set back up. Salina doing a nice job with a calculated attack. At the Farmers, most of the game, the Farmers have been able to thwart the attack of the Bobcats. But unfortunately, they kept them to, well, fortunately, they kept them to one goal in the first half. But this second half, Salina has been able to get in between the Farmers and score three here in the second half to bring it four to nothing. Yeah. Farmersville throwing it in. Trying to get something started, sends it back across to midfield. Seeing from the midfield if he can probably bring something down. Got a lot of hand and body contact between the Bobcats and the Farmers right there. Switching it up, kicking it out of bounds. A little bit of physicality happening. Uh, mostly a frustration by the Farmers. And we've got a substitution call by Salina. Happened before the throw-in to the players coming in off the bench for Salina. Probably trying to get some playing time for these players that may not normally get playing time in there. Up four to nothing with 18 minutes left in the game. Gives you an opportunity to get some players that may not play a lot of varsity time. Get them some experience, especially since this is only the second game in district. Farmersville trying to get control over that ball. Sends it down the center of the field. And taken away by Salina. But a little pinball action, swipping, switching things up back and forth between the purple and white. And now control gained by the Bobcats. Coming to the attack from the center and a kick wide right. That's going to go out of bounds. And they're getting a goal kick. Call from the sideline judge. Just under 18 minutes left in the game. Salina four. Farmersville zero. While we're waiting for our goalie from Farmersville to get that ball back in the game, I want to send a shout out to Gwen and Savvy May. Obviously, dear friends of mine, and uh, I can certainly call Gwen May uh, a girlfriend if you would like. Uh, she is kind enough to help out and bring some food uh, to the crew. So I want to send a big shout out for that. Uh, she was able to bring some some pizza and uh, uh, some other treats up to the crew that we've got going on work in the game tonight. And that is uh, definitely one of the things that uh, we enjoy here on the AV production crew. We get an opportunity to spend uh, two games, which is going to be two, two and a half hours per game. So we're spending about four and a half, five hours together, and, and in between that time, like to like to get them fed. So uh, big shout out to Gwen and Savvy May. Thank you so much for 
for helping us out and bringing some food up to the crew and, and providing some pizza for uh, for that team. Farmersville trying to get something started he got on the goal kick, ended up getting a free kick right there from the 40-yard line, kicked it well past the midpoint, uh, got some activity happening here on the front side. Uh, our lead attacker for Farmersville, a little frustrated with his teammates on that one, was talking to him and trying to let him know, look, I'm wide open, get that ball to me. We got an opportunity to attack on the goal. and Not able to make it happen, a throw in from Salina brings the ball back into midfield and Farmersville trying to get something started. We got a whistle blow uh, by midfield and I think that was a faulty throw in. He stepped on the line, so Farmersville is going to get the ball on the far side of the field just inside the 30. 15 and a half minutes left in the game. Farmersville doing the best they can to keep the ball on their side of the field and try to be able to make some attacks on the goal. Fighting Farmers thought that ball went off of Salina, but to no avail, and Salina gets the throw in. Sends it down the field, tries to make something happen, but interrupted by Farmersville. We got some fancy footwork going on right there, and Farmersville trying to keep the attack. They're able to do it, sends it down the field, bringing it back to the middle of the field, and tripped up by one of the Salina players. Good sportsmanship on that part. Was not intentional or malicious, but a free kick for the Farmers at about the American football 25-yard line. Let's see if we can make something happen here. The Farmers definitely need to get on the board to get them back in the game and seeing if they can make some, at least some points and attacks by the team to get them some positive goal scores on the board. A big boot by a Fighting Farmer, but... Trying to curve the ball hard from right to left and not able to do it. Sends it out the right side of the goal post. And I believe that is uh, the Fighting Farmer, their field goal kicker for the American football squad. He set that kick up just like it was a field goal. Salina making their way down and attacking, trying to just reverse the field quick and make an attack on the ball, not able to do it. Farmersville able to clear it out on the sidelines, and that's going to be a throw-in for Salina. Salina throws it in, tries to get something started. Not able to do it. Farmersville able to interrupt it. Trying to get the ball going on their side of the field. And Farmersville just clears it out. I'm going to make Salina throw it in on that side of the field. 13 minutes left in the game. Salina making two more substitutions. Trying to get as many players in the game as they can. Get that district game experience up 4 to nothing. Trying to get as many players out there as they can just so they've got that experience. A little bit of too much activity by Farmersville and Salina. Whistle blows, calling it a free kick. Not sure what the Salina player was doing there, just kicking the ball around to himself as the refs are yelling at him, telling him to get it back over there. Again, a little bit of a gamesmanship ta uh, tactic probably. Salina knowing they're up 4 nothing, trying to take as much time off the clock as they can, not give the Farmers an opportunity to get much of a play. Throw in down the sidelines, gets it down pretty far, back to almost midfield. Salina separates it out and kicks it out of bounds. That's going to be a Farmersville throw in. Farmersville gets it tossed in almost to midfield, and again, too much contact by Salina. Free kick for Farmersville. Gets it down in front of the players, but just not able to get out in front of it 
And that ball crosses in front of both of them and out of bounds, and that's going to be a throw in for Salina. The biggest thing that Farmersville's got to do right now at this point is is get that just get that disruption of the Salina players on their side of the field. Get the ball back and not have to make the full attack for the entire length of the field. Try to get something happening down on this end as quickly as possible. Salina able to clear it out down the field, and with that wind help, as I mentioned, the ball kicked too high and up and over the Farmersville's head. They tried to clear it out of the side, and the wind just too strong pushes out the back end of the goal, and that is going to be a corner kick for Salina. So far, Farmersville's done a nice job defending the corner kick, uh, but again, with this much wind help, no telling what might happen on this side of the field. <clears throat> Corner kick coming in from the far side of the field. Salina is set up on the outside of the box. Man, trying to make an attack coming into the center. No one able to make contact on the ball like on that end. And it clears out of bounds, and that's a goal kick for Farmersville. As Farmers try to find their way to the ball and get it back into play as quickly as possible, uh, let you know that the Fighting Farmers will be in action again this Saturday, uh, but they will be away, and then they'll be back. Um, and they've got two away games, so Saturday and Wednesday. Um, but then, I believe, looking at the calendar right now, that we are back. Uh, on the 18th, yeah, we are back at home versus Anna on Saturday the 18th. So hopefully we'll have an opportunity to bring you another live stream of uh, soccer on Saturday the 18th. Salina uh, able to take control over that goal kick and sends it out of bounds, deflects it off of one of the farmers, and that's going to be another corner kick for the Bobcats. Actually, I do have a correction on that information. On Wednesday, February 15th, we will be back at home for soccer. So we will have an opportunity to live stream, bring farmer f soccer, football, if you will, uh, back on the live stream next Wednesday and Saturday. Farmers trying to clear the ball out down the center of the field, able to do so, and Salina just trying to set up the offense again, trying to spread it out. Uh, no question that Salina is not taking uh, too much time or trying to take as much time as possible, not trying to be too quick with their shots back towards the goal. They're up 4 nothing and just trying to take as much time off the clock as they can. Uh, both teams coming into tonight's matchup 0-1 in district. So both trying to see what they can do to come away with the first victory in district. Salina had a lot more success in their preseason than Farmersville did. But uh, still, Owen, both teams 0-1, an opportunity for either team to come away with a victory. Right now, Salina dominating most of the offensive end of the fields. And Farmersville with a throw-in sends it out of bounds, but deflected off of Salina. And this may be the first opportunity for Farmersville to get a corner kick. Now it looks like it went out just before the corner. So a throw in from that side. But a great opportunity for Farmersville to try to set up an offensive attack and see if they can get something towards the goal. Exactly what I was talking about before. This is where Farmersville needs to just disrupt the the ball and the defense, but that ball kicked high and long by the goalie for Salina and sends it literally right back to the other goalie, the Farmersville goalie on their side of the field. 
Again, with the wind blowing 30 miles an hour from left to right, from the west to the east, when you get that ball up in the air, it's just going to take it and send it. Kicked out of bounds by the Farmers, trying to make something happen. It looked like he was maybe trying to kick it off of the Salina players or thought maybe his own player was on the other side of it and just couldn't control it, send it out of bounds, and now this is a throw in for Salina. Salina just kicks it back to their own goalie, and again, as we mentioned, doing everything they can to run as much time off the clock and come away with the victory. Salina sends it deep down to the center of the field, loses control of that, and kicks it out of bounds. The referee does a nice job kicking it back in. That's helpful for Farmersville because they don't have to go chasing after that soccer ball. Farmers with a throw in. Substitution for Farmersville, switching out. Players trying to get as many in the action as they can. Thrown in down the line. Kicked out of bounds by Salina. Another throw in by Farmersville. One of the players streaking down the line, but unfortunately the throw in stays out of bounds. Never makes it way inbounds, and so that where therefore Salina gets an opportunity to throw it back. Kicked out and cleared out by Farmersville. Hit off the header. Farmersville trying to gain control of it on this end of the field. Still doing a lot, a great job marking up on the players. But that ball sent down and to the opposite end of the field and scooped up by the goalie for Farmersville. Five minutes left in the game. Farmers just trying to do anything they can to get on the board. Any points in this game is obviously going to help their cause. So even if they don't come away with a victory, it's always nice to have some points on the board. Farmersville trying to make an attack on the offensive. Able to get it down to their end. Kicked out of bounds by Salina. Farmersville trying to get it in quick, seeing if they can make something happen quick on their end of the field. Still have control over it. Disrupted a little bit by Salina, but maintaining control trying to set up the offensive attack to see if they can do something to get a shot on goal. Kanani able to get it down underneath, trying to send it out to his own players, somebody trying to make an attack, not able to make it happen, still keeping control of the ball, keeping it this into the field, which is what we haven't seen most of the game, and that's definitely what Farmersville is trying to do, and Coach Walker, I'm sure, is pretty happy with his players trying to keep the ball on this side of the field. Unfortunately, the ball goes out of bounds, and that's going to be a goal kick for Salina, and because they are, he is kicking with the wind, and he's a pretty strong goalkeeper, and he's got a pretty strong foot, everybody's making their way to the middle of the field. He does not choose to kick it all the way down to the field and starts it off on the short kick, but Salina goes ahead and boots it back down there uh, to almost the 30-yard line on the American football side. And that ball kicked in front, and if if... Salina would have made contact. I'm sure that would have been offsides, but it goes out of bounds. However, indication by the referee that was deflected off of Farmers, and that's going to be a corner kick. Three minutes left in the game. Farmersville doing everything they can to keep Salina out of the goal and trying to get the ball back to their end and see if they can get on the scoreboard. Salina not able to do anything with that corner kick and deflected off of their own players out of bounds, and that is going to be a goal kick for Farmersville. Goal kick coming from Farmersville. Just over two minutes left in the game. Trying to make something happen. Big kick down towards midfield. And Salina just goes ahead and clears it out and sends it back to their own goalie. Their own goalie kicks it deep down the center and right back to Farmersville goalie. Very much a back and forth game for both teams at this point. 
Salina doing everything they can to just take as much time off the clock and Farmersville trying to do what they can to get the ball to their offensive end of the field and see if they can get a score. Salina brings it back around, trying to cross up the field. Farmersville getting a hold of it, making contact on it, and unfortunately clearing it out. That's going to be a throw in for Slide on the far side of the field. Minute and 20 seconds left in the game. Not enough time for Farmersville to try to get back in and tie it up with Salina, but definitely enough time to try to make an attack on the goal and see if they can get on the scoreboard. Salina just doing everything they can to run as much time off the clock as possible. Bouncing that ball back and forth. Farmersville trying to get in between the passes and see if they can disrupt it just under a minute left in the game. Salina controlling it right now. Farmersville trying to do what they can, as I said, to just disrupt the activity. Salina controlling all the action right now as it is. A header by Farmersville sends the ball back down to midfield. Farmersville's got control over it down the center. Tries to make something happen down the center of the field. Nothing doing. Salina gains control over it, but disrupted back up by Farmersville. Farmers doing a great job keeping Salina out of the offensive on this side of the field. Two things that you want from your coach at this point of the game. You don't want the other team to score any more points. And you want to try to get your team down on their offensive side of the thing. Just get on the board. But unfortunately, Farmers not able to score in this match. But kept Salina, a strong team in the district, down on under five goals. Keeping them at four. So the end of the game, we have a score of Salina Bobcats four. Farmersville fighting Farmers zero. That puts the Farmers 0-2 in district. But Salina 1-1 one one in the district. Farmersville will be back in action on Saturday. Uh, they go away, and both the Lady Farmers and the Fighting Farmers uh, playing this Saturday. Uh, looks like they are going to be at bottom. Uh, as we heard from uh, Coach Riffey, that's actually a great opportunity. Uh, bottom matches up a little bit more like the Farmers, and the Farmers match up a little bit better against bottom, so a great opportunity for Farmers maybe to put a, a win on, in the W in the win column in the district play. But we'll be back home on the 15th, and the Fighting Farmers and the Lady Farmers will back, be, be back here at Farmers Stadium for two games in a row on the 15th and the 18th. Also, if you are checking out all the sports on live stream here in the, the Farmersville uh, Network, uh, AV Production Sports Network, we do have a tiebreaker basketball game this Friday. The Lady Farmers are going up against the Community Lady Braves. They are playing in Greenville at 615 on Friday. This is to determine who takes that fourth seed in the district and gets an opportunity to go into the playoffs. So hopefully we'll catch you this Friday live here on the YouTube. Thank you for joining us. I want to send a big shout-out to the production crew and a big shout-out to Coach Riffey, who was my guest commentator during the games, girls' match. You guys have a wonderful rest of the week, and hopefully you can stay warm today and tomorrow, and we'll see if we catch you guys on the basketball game live stream on Friday and then back here with Fighting Farmer Soccer on Wednesday. Have a great night.